Oh, uh, well, what's the F on that uh, refractor? F4 or uh, F5? 4.4. I mean, you it's don't not, need special filters. It's not too, it's not too so. shabby, right? So, yeah. 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 I mean, making a fast refractor is almost impossible physics, right? That's why they, you don't see fast refractors because the light column yeah. and the design is almost impossible. But, you know, what's the fastest refractor? Like a 3.8 or something? Or 3 with the Vixen? Uh, yeah. So, I can make the 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 card if there's faster. Uh, you can buy a corrector for it. What, reducer. What's the F by that uh, refractor? I'm just or scared that point more four. dragons are going to appear, more seagulls, I mean, more weird shapes. It's not, it's it's not too yeah. it's not I, too I have one.
Okay, I think that should work. Um, maybe somebody can also check check the YouTube yeah. stream to get you. Yeah, I'm doing to, that. <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing showing you. up just yet. Okay. There's always a little bit of delay, so. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, busy. there is a little bit of a delay, but. There we go. I'm starting to see something now. Yeah. Yep, me too. Okay. Nice. It works. Wonderful. Wonderful. That should work. I hope the audio and everything okay, is yeah, working. That should work. Um, maybe somebody can also. Okay. So, uh, uh, warm welcome to everyone here on YouTube to our live show. Always Sunday evening under the full moon. We try it under the full moon. And tonight we have again a very special guest. Uh, I'm really happy to to get Sean Nielsen here uh, in to our show. He's from Canada, also known as Visible Dark Astro. Maybe you heard his name already. He is also present on YouTube, Instagram, all the social media <coughs> social media channels. So uh, welcome to you, Sean. It's nice. Thank to you very much. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, great. And yeah, the the plan is that Sean is telling us something about his astronomy hobby and before we start with that i want to show you in the first place i want to show you some uh images from from our viewers here from from the youtube live stream we always invite um the viewers to send us images astro images uh, with a little uh, description that we can show them here in the show this is really cool and this time also some emails were coming in that's really great and I just let me just bring up my email here. I did not um, extract from the email. So guys, I will share my screen with you that you can also see. What I'm showing here. Okay, do you see my screen? The, yes. the email. Okay. So this is from Rene Hoffman. Uh, unfortunately, not very much detail. I also don't know where this is, where this belongs to because there are four images. Maybe if uh, Rene, if you are also watching, uh, just drop a comment. I will uh, then uh, add this information. So but yeah, let's get have a look right into it. Here we have the elephant trunk. Nice one. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah. And I already see. Is this nanoband or huh? what is it? Oh, one shot color with kind of filter? Uh, so, sorry, this, Iwan, I don't what, know. What? Is this one shot color or is yeah. it nanoband uh, uh, for, for the elephant trunk, not for the galaxy? I mean. Unfortunately, I can't tell you. Yeah. Only, uh, only this information. Oh, okay. here he's in the chat. Perfect. <laughs> 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 Great. <laughs> then I think we get some information right soon. Um, okay, North American. Oh well, that's processed. I think. Yeah, it's very noise reduction. Yeah, that's the, that's the noise reduction. Yeah. I'm really curious to hear what this ten hours belong. Ah, okay. Okay. Oh, and here we have the elephant trunk also in the in the full field. That's nice. Don't yeah, know. Yeah, this is the red cat, right? So I guess this is the, yeah. the red cat, and the other ones are the mm -hmm. TS one hundred. Ah, with an uh, with an ASI two nine four MC Pro and an L Extreme. Oh, okay. So it was like a one shot color. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Really nice. Nice work. Yeah. Keep yeah. adding data. Less nice. Less noise redu noise reduction. Yeah, I think, I think Rene, uh, this one, I think you you should use less noise reduction. That's still still a good image. I'm pretty sure. Less noise reduction and less star reduction too. Yeah. 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 I think there was a little too much star reduction going on in it. Good point, Sean. But anyway, good good job. Definitely. 
So then here we have, yeah, here's more, more description, Michaelis. Fantastic. So let's start with M45, please. Uh, just reading through a set EQ6. Oh, this M81, I just, uh, the, the chat is lagging a bit. We have a bit of time difference here. M81 was 10 hours of integration. Whoa. With mm. TSQ100. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's that's deep. And here the pleats is Sony A7 III. Okay, six hours of RGB data. Yeah, that's... That's, that's very nice. nice. Yes. That's yeah. nice, yeah. yeah. As usual, uh, astronomers, yeah. astronomers are always looking at the corners, uh, but they're, <laughs> they're good. <laughs> no, really, that's... Also, the, the nice. flux that's appearing here, that's cool. Yeah, you can see the flux nebula there <clears> and uh, <throat> the good control on the stars, a very yeah. difficult object to because the stars can easily get blown out. So did a very it's nice very, job. It's very, very strange. Especially with the DSLR, this is beautiful. You don't mm -hmm. see the noise curtain. Uh, yep. And yeah, nice nice crop or nice uh, right. nice back focus on the refractor. Right. And next one is M106. Um, Luminance, 80 by 240. Oh, yeah. Oh. Just the luminance oh. that looks... Oh, okay. Wow. Beautiful. Nice There's work. a lot of detail. Holy. Yeah. Because it's the luminance. Some... Yeah, yeah, it looks like the luminance. It, yeah, it, right. Lovely yeah. detail. Great also detail. You also got the cluster. These, these little yeah. bodies here. And this one, wow. That's great. Well, yeah. Hold on. Are, are those little... Are those little uh, Points their galaxies or stars because I, I think uh, that's a cluster. That's a cluster, Giazza, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. That's really good. Love to see this in color. <laughs> yeah, looking <laughs> forward for the finished one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and the last one, M8, M20, also the, oh, the Sony with the Samyang 135. And the Star Adventure, okay. Mm. Yeah, that's... No, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, right. Really nice. Some mm. great detail there. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> okay, Michael, thank you very much. And another one from Richard. He is also a resident viewer, I think. I heard this name often uh, taken with a TS Photon 8-inch um, F5. TS Optics Comma Corrector EQ6 Pro Mount and a 60D, a Canon 60D A. Okay, oh. yeah, that's nice. It's uh, always a, yeah, you have to to deal with the, cool. the framing here on Andromeda is, of course, super large. But anyway. Nice position nice. on the spikes. I always like when spikes are actually looking like crosses instead of X, the diffraction spikes. I'm, I'm not sure if this is just the, the, the um, file compression, but there's some sort of artifact in it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, there's something yeah, I can on sort of see it. It's going nice. on, unfortunately, because otherwise, and this size it's is a very good. nice image. Yeah. Lots of good detail. A little bit of background modeling, I think, happening with yeah. it. Uh, but yeah. uh, um, that, that could be a factor of uh, using too much noise reduction again, possibly. Uh, so yeah. one possibility. That's right. Also, could you do some HDR in the core? But yeah, yeah, yeah really definitely. Yeah, I would agree with that. John has a video for that. I've seen his videos when he actually does an HDR uh, multi comp on one of these images. John, so, yeah. yeah, you have the solution. You just have to go on YouTube and find it. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's correct. Okay. And last but not least from Captas. This was just rolling in an hour ago, so um, but uh, we are dynamic enough to to show all these things. So uh, where to start? Just oh, Richard is also in the chat. Great, <laughs> nice to see you again. Uh, I had some issues with guiding on that one; it was not in po focus perfectly. Yeah. So I was but, gonna pick on the, on the corners, but then if it's guiding, 
Sean has a video for that as well. Using, I think you're using <laughs> Sean, uh, not the convolution, what was it? Uh, morphological transformation or something to fix guiding errors, right? Um, that I was, think it was um, the decon. That was the decon actually for to fix the uh, egg shaped stars. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, yeah, yeah. It was deconvolution. Yeah, it's got a uh, feature in there that you can sort of tweak things a little bit. It doesn't do it, you know, one hundred percent, but it certainly is an improvement. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I watched that and it helped. Awesome, great, good, glad. That's why I put the videos up. Hopefully, yeah. people get some. You, you know, uh, can I can help others with it? So that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so now. Uh... Let's so who's see. this image from? Yeah, just a moment. I uh, was too too quick. I, mm -hmm. This was just a link from Captas. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, I'm also M45. Sure. Unfortunately, with no information. Oh, um, he's also in the chat. Great, great to see. <laughs> uh, so maybe you can just quickly write uh, some some details uh, about these images. We see M. 45 here more wide field i, I think it's Otila. i think the first name is Otila. Kata is the last name but i could be wrong uh, yeah beautiful m45 mm -hmm. yes it was yeah mm -hmm. and here we have the well mm -hmm. to this time of the year well known yeah, that's a very popular target this time of the year. That's sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone's on it. I've 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 been back to it so many times over the years. It's a it's just a great target. Yeah, right. That's definitely worth it. Is this HA RGB or am I? Is it just me? It looks like there's a little bit of HA in there. Yeah, uh, definitely. Or... I, I'm. Yeah, there has to be yeah. some HA in yeah. there. I would think. Yeah. Otherwise, I things. Think so. Really? Okay. No, yeah. I don't think so too. Because I've done all RGB, I'm going to show you later, and I've got a lot of H alpha out of it. So, okay. so the so H alpha he used, here is very bright. Yeah. He said he used an Esprit 100 and a 268C, so it'd be one shot color. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and the stars are cool, so I think this is our mm -hmm. RGB. Well, probably it's the 268 571 sensor that's so sensitive that. Yeah, it it's a very good one. Yeah, I have one of those cameras, and it's uh, performed really well. Okay, I, I just check out the, the next ones. Yeah, he's doing a good job. Uh, with the Valentine. Fantastic, fantastic framing here. It fits perfectly <laughs> to mm -hmm. the size. Yeah, but as we all maybe all know, uh, this is hard to get an RGB, the hard nebula. I think it's super hard. In, in narrow band, that's okay. There's some, some signal, but RGB is just a pain. At least R RGB opinion. largely, yeah. RGB, you'd probably be largely shooting for star color, and then just yeah. combining that with, uh, yeah. you know, your H alpha data and your uh, O three and sulfur two. That that's what I think is is the best approach for this object. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's this and the Sol Nebula have no value in in, in RGB. Mm -hmm. It's just it's yeah. going to be mostly red with some yeah. oxygen. The stars are going to be overpowering. So yeah. It's a nice image, though. It's very nicely done. Beautiful detail in the, the lot there. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy object to shoot, along with the left side dust that comes with it. Really nice. Your really correction nice. looks mm -hmm. good as well. Yeah. Your back focus looks good. That, yeah. That's what I was looking for, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you just can't appreciate the image. You got a pixel peep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Poor guy. That's why, that's why we don't send images to Thorsten. Let, let's not this. look at the image. <laughs> let's just let's just look at the pixels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this one, this is also really deep. Um, yeah, it looks really good. It's that's extremely good. good. Yeah, that's really good. I like it. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Yeah, some excellent work there. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you about what you said. You used the S three one hundred and uh, okay, that's beautiful work. No filter. Oh, he used the L-Extreme on some of them, okay. Yeah, you can see L-Extreme when the stars in halos. Yeah. It's really good skin. Don't pick on the halos. It's never seen it this way. 
I'm not sure. Is this real or is this uh, some That's sort? Real. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I only Love. know this this core region. region here, but the, the surroundings are new to me. Great. The Christmas tree and the cone. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. this whole thing, thing is a, twice as big as the Rosette Nebula. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Or even more. Doing this for four months, he wrote. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's pretty good for four months. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Insane. Definitely. You must you must have been watching Sean's videos? I'll be honest, because you look like you have this configuration. <laughs> you keep, use the tutorials. You keep, Sean, well, you keep, you keep plugging my you keep plugging my YouTube channel. What's going on? <laughs> I'm a big fan. What can I say? I'm a big fan. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, the last one is here. Rosette Nebula. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Get so, right into the corner there. <laughs> Right <laughs> um, well, the compression. What do the pixels look like? To, to be honest, um, te technically there's no uh, nothing to complain. Uh, no, it's a, it's a good, it's a very nice, uh, very nice image. Very good. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, the stars look nice and tight. Yeah, it's, a very and... Nice, it's a nice palette. It's yeah, yeah it is. <clears throat> you push the limits on this, to be honest, because yeah. I played with uh, with these quad filters and some of the best ones and. Nice job. Usually it's a mm -hmm. full of pixels that you get and then you work with it. So nice job on it. Also, star reduction is pretty nicely done. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That These were the images that I got so far. So, as usual, if you want to have your images shown here in the, in the, in our live show, just uh, drop us an email. I will share the email address again. Just a moment. There it is. So um, we will try to show them all. And also, if there are uh, enough coming in, we can also do a session dedicated only to guest images, to viewers images. That would be also a cool thing. Um, but yeah, then we have to, we, we need some more, <laughs> just some more. Okay, so now um, I think uh, time has come uh, to give Sean the stage uh, that he, he can tell us sure. so something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, no, that'd be great. Yeah, no, I appreciate uh, you guys having me on. Uh, it's great to join you. Um, I'll just uh, share my screen here and uh, uh, let me just see. I'll just, uh, I'm going to do this from inside Pixinsight because that's where I live mostly anyway. So very, very comfortable inside Pixinsight. Um, so yeah, my name is Sean Nielsen. Uh, my website is visibledark.ca, and uh, uh, as was already mentioned, I'm on YouTube and uh, the various social media platforms. Uh, feel free to follow along and uh, leave some comments if you like. Um, when I first started in astrophotography, I had dabbled in astrophotography as a teenager for some time, a, a number of years. Uh, but that was before we had computer control and auto guiding. I was uh, largely doing uh, imaging uh, uh, using a, a large 14 inch reflector, 14 and a half inch reflector, actually. And I was doing manual guiding. So I had to monitor the star with a uh, an illuminated reticle and make corrections with a little joystick. Um, it was it was quite challenging. And uh, the images that I got out of it were not uh, not the greatest, but I was still very much infatuated with it. Um, I still you know, incredibly thrilled with the results that I got. I don't unfortunately have those images to show you. I wish I did. I didn't have time to, to look them up. But um, when I uh, uh, got serious in astrophotography again after that, um, it was a number of years later. Uh, and it was uh, 2008, actually, summer of 2008, when I started back into astrophotography. And I, I went specifically back into it um, for the purpose of doing imaging. I'm not much of a visual person. Um, I don't mind looking through the telescope and having a peek here and there. Uh, but my passion is really for imaging the cosmos. So that's, that's where I, uh, uh, that, that was the focus that I had with regards to getting back into um, the hobby. So this image here was the very first image that I took of M31. And uh, it doesn't look you know, anything spectacular, but at the time to me, it was incredible to be able to capture a, a galaxy, uh, you know, with my camera and telescope. And uh, it really fueled 
the uh, interest for me to, to keep going. But what I had started out with was uh, a mistake in some ways, um, because uh, I was using to image this here, I used an SCT, it was an eight inch SCT. And it wasn't at the time, it wasn't actually even mounted on an equatorial platform. It was just alt as that I took this and I didn't have auto guiding or anything. And uh, this added up to, I took a number of exposures. I don't remember how many, they were short, but I, it added up to about eight minutes of data that I had for this photo here taken through an SCT. And uh, I was really, really happy with it. I was really thrilled and I kept going. But as I talked to more and more people with regards to astrophotography, and their experience in it, I was sort of navigated towards using a refractor, a, a small wide field refractor to get uh, to get going with things to, to have a little bit of an easier time. He's obviously shooting at um, F10 or F6.3, depending how I had the, the SCT configured is very challenging. Even to this day, it's still very challenging to, to image at long focal lengths like that. So um, they, I had some great people that, uh, you know, were very helpful and informative. And uh, they, they just, I directed me to a refractor, small refractor, which you can see piggybacked on top of the SCT that I have there. And I used that to image quite a number of uh, deep sky objects at the time. Um, that actually, I worked with that telescope for about uh, three or four years and uh, got some really good results. Um, even was happy to be able, you know, to, to see some of the images I took uh, with it published uh, in Astronomy Magazine and Sky and Telescope at the time. So that was uh, really thrilling for, for someone who had just gotten, you know, really back into the astrophotography ho uh, hobby and trying to understand how things had changed so dramatically. We, we now had computers controlling the telescopes and auto guiding and software. So it was, uh, it was a big change from what I was uh, coming from uh, originally, but um, I had, uh, I had a, a good passion for it and I kept going and um, the end result, just to flip forward, you know, a number of years, uh, more than a decade, this is an image I took just last fall uh, of M31 using my own equipment that I have in the backyard. So we've gone from starting out with that to reaching this level here, which is, uh, you know, truly amazing. I think that what we can do you know, with our backyard telescopes, uh, we're, we're, you know, performing uh, imaging tasks that were once uh, relegated to just, you know, observatories uh, located somewhere in the world. Uh, now we've, we've got our, you know, equipment, our backyard telescopes and our, our uh, high, you know, sensitivity cameras that we can really do some extraordinary work in capturing um, the, the deep sky objects that are all out there for us to uh, uh, enjoy. So um, I had a number of different equipment a lot lots of different equipment I've, I've actually filtered through a lot of different some of i sold some of i kept a lot of it i sold just to fund new purchases and whatnot um on the left is a newtonian that i had for a while there uh it was an orion uh it was a 10 inch f uh, 3.9 i believe it was uh is the exact focal ratio for it and i was using a modified dslr at the time uh to take these uh these images so i should actually just point out that this uh, original image here was taken with a, a DSLR uh, camera. It wasn't modified or anything. It was just a stock uh, DSLR camera. And this, of course, was taken with a uh, 268 uh, uh, QHY 268M monochrome camera and filters. Um, and you, you also added H alpha to the galaxy, right? Yeah, like there's some H alpha in there as well. That's right. So it's uh, it's basically a, an H alpha LRGB image that I took, and this uh, telescope was the um, the Starfield uh, 80 triplet is what I was using at the time. I was testing it, so uh, it was a uh, it was a nice uh, little compact refractor, worked well. Um, so yeah, getting back to the equipment, this is one setup that I used, and this is when I would travel, I would go to dark sites and I would carry this around. Um, it was, it was a lot to carry around. I wouldn't recommend it if I was, you know, doing, I, I haven't done in recent years, a lot of, uh, traveling to dark sites, but, um, I am thinking about doing it again, and I'm going to be developing a much more mobile setup 
something lightweight, um, wide field that uh, uh, doesn't involve as much work as it did to transport this equipment around and set it up and tear it down every night. So um, I got interested in as as it became more challenging to travel to dark sites and you know be out till 5 a.m uh, a lot of times and then drive home uh, i started to entertain doing some astrophotography from the driveway and this was one setup that i had used uh, which was a william optics refractor a 71 millimeter with a uh, fli filter wheel and an s big 8300 camera um, and I was actually able to do, again, you know, dealing with street lights and, and people's home lights, uh, porch lights and whatnot uh, makes it challenging. But I was able to do some narrow band imaging using this setup. And this was one of the images that I was able to acquire using this exact setup here uh, from the driveway. So um, NGC 7000. And uh, this one was published. Uh, this was actually an, an image of the week uh, in Sky News magazine uh, back in the uh, the day. I can't remember. Uh, 2014, actually. It's right here. It's listed right there. 2014. So um, I did that for about a couple of years imaging uh, in the driveway. And uh, it was... Um, I got a lot more done. I found I got a lot more done than if I traveled to a dark site and because uh, I could take advantage of uh, windows of opportunity a lot easier. Uh, traveling to the dark site required about a 45 minute to an hour drive and then the time to set up and whatnot. So it wasn't always conducive, uh, but imaging from the driveway certainly was, you know, uh, much easier to do. So I enjoyed the, uh, doing that uh, for a couple of years. And then um, I ended up moving my my uh, platform to the back uh, of the house where not as good in terms of uh, sky visibility. Uh, I reduced my sky quite a bit because there's a green space adjacent to our property with hundred foot trees. So it blocks a lot of my East and South uh, skies. Um, but I was able to get away from some of the light pollution that was happening at the front from the street light and from porch lights and so forth. And, and also it allowed me to, uh, moving it to the back allowed me to leave it set up and, and not have to worry about it so much security wise as it would be sitting out front. So um, there was there was a number of uh, positive aspects to moving the setup to the backyard uh, from the driveway, uh, but it came at a price, unfortunately. But like a friend of mine says, uh, you know, you got to work with what you've got. And uh, that's what I did. I just, uh, I just continued, you know, trying to do the best I could and, and learn as much as I could about the hobby as I was uh, continuing to, to improve in it and uh, get deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. So um, uh, one question, here, yeah. Sean. Uh, mm -hmm. going back, I like your high tech solution for securing the camera. It's, it's very <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had nothing, I had nothing else. And I was worried about that thing oh, yeah. falling off. So <laughs> I had a piece of rope and it worked. <laughs> At the time, the CCD will cost a lot of money. So I like that. It's very elegant. It's well, you know what? It, it made me, it made me feel good. And it, if it did fall off, it wasn't going to hit the ground at least, you know, that's how I saw it. So, cause it was, you know, the, the camera wasn't cheap back in the day. It was expensive. Right. So. But uh, yeah, rope it was. <laughs> That's interesting. Someone noticed that. I never. I don't even see it anymore. Looking at that photo. That's funny. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> okay, so um, continuing the adventure, uh, I was using. Um, uh, for these photos here, I actually used these two telescopes. So these were taken back in uh, 2010, 2011. Uh, this is a two panel mosaic I took using the uh, Skywatcher Equinox 80 millimeter that I had piggy piggybacked on top of the SCT and, uh, and Terry's obviously region there. And uh, I did that over the course of a few nights and it uh, turned out not too bad. It wasn't I'd actually like to go back and process this data now because when I was processing this data, it was in Photoshop, which is a great tool. It, it, you know, I did some amazing images and I've seen a lot of great work with Photoshop, but I've learned so much over the years. And uh, we now have, you know, dedicated 
image processing programs like PixInsight, which is uh, just incredibly powerful. So it would be interesting to go back and uh, reprocess this data and see how much better it could possibly be. Uh, because it turned out, in my opinion, it turned out really nice uh, given what I was working with, uh, uh, you know, a DSLR camera and a, a small refractor. This turned out really beautiful. So uh, that is something that I do intend to do. Um, I just have to, funny enough, you know, the way things have changed with computers and stuff, uh, I don't have a DVD drive in my computer <laughs> and all of this data Neither. is backed up on DVD drives. So yeah, it changed so much. So I got to get a DVD drive again, just to be able to access this data, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely something I'm going to do in the future. Uh, this is uh, M8. Uh, so I took this using, this is through the SCT, the Celestron uh, CPC 800 at f6.3 and a nice uh, nice close up there of the uh, the heart of the lagoon nebula and again this is actually another one that i would really love to go back and reprocess uh, i think it, it it's good data and it has uh, it has good potential uh, for being reprocessed there was some there was some back in the, the the when i was you know processing this i didn't have the knowledge or access to some of the tools that we've got now so the uh, the image processing wasn't the best I uh, got some dark ringing around the stars and stuff, and uh, uh, we've got some chromatic aberration that could be fixed with the new, you know, in PixInsight there with some new techniques and so forth. So I think this is a, a worthy image set uh, data to go back and, and reprocess, and hopefully one day I'll be able to do that. Um, yeah, there's can an, you just um, yeah. zoom in on the core of this M8? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can go in there a little bit. How like the bright, the, the bright stuff here right in there Gee, this is looks so good you even got the um, yeah it's actually not there. bad yeah in terms of the core again uh you know there was a lot of work done to try and maintain the core uh, not not have it blow out too much in that so yeah, there's yeah. some good detail that's why i think this is actually really worthy of a re redo um because it, it is a, a really nice image uh, just as it is and i can see the potential with it and i can see the mistakes that i made uh, you know in in my image processing back then versus now so and you also added star spikes right Yes. Yeah. Those star spikes are added in using at the time it was popular. I can't remember what it was called though. Um, but it was for Photoshop and you could add in the spikes if you wanted to. Yeah. Sean, another question, um, from mm -hmm. what, uh, uh, latitude are you shooting? It's mm. pretty difficult to get these Southern objects, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't rise too high i would say i'd have to look and see exactly it's not terrible uh m8 and m20 they get uh, maybe about uh about maybe 40 degrees above the horizon here so it's not terrible really? i'm shooting from okay. yeah 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 it's actually okay. not that bad yeah um if you go higher like i'm i'm uh i'm at 43 degrees so uh, i'm actually southern ontario where i'm located in southern ontario is actually in line with um parts of Northern California even. So um, yeah. I'm not that high okay, up actually, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah not that high same up. for me. I'm in, I'm in 37 and yeah, it gets pretty high, but it does. It pretty yeah. It's okay. yeah, yeah. You don't get a lot of time on it, but um, it, it gets high enough that you can do some nice, uh, hmm. nice imaging. So yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then this is just another shot from when I was going out to the dark sites with my equipment, of course, and uh, drove out there. We uh, we had a, it was a, a farmland actually, and there was a back uh, area that had, we had brought gravel in and uh, sand and packed it and so forth so that we had, uh, you know, some sort of a base that we could drive on and, and set things up. And I brought the patio stones out that you see laying down there on the ground and uh, made a little spot that was somewhat uh, uh, conducive for being able to get in there and set things up quickly and, and get going. So that worked out well. I did that for a number of years and I had a lot of fun doing it. It was just very grueling to stay up all night and especially in the colder months too, you know, and you had to huddle in, in the, in the truck or the car and try and keep warm while the equipment imaged overnight. So, but uh, lots of fun, lots of fun there. Uh, moving on. I started to explore some work with uh, star trackers. Um, I haven't done a lot with them, but I did take this image here uh, in Northern Ontario 
uh, northern to me. It's about a seven hour drive to this location from where I am. And uh, you get some really nice dark skies. This is, I haven't really explored a lot of imaging with star trackers, um, but the potential is there. And it, it, this worked out well for me because it was a, it was a good uh, small portable setup that I could take easily with me uh, to this location. So I, I wanted to give it a try and it, uh, it worked out not too bad. I was pretty happy with the, uh, the image overall. I don't, is anyone else using star trackers to do their imaging? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. yes. I think we all do. You all do? Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. yet. I, not yet? Okay. <laughs> I think we're planning weekends, on weekends getting in. away. It's great. You know, if you've got a family and lots of, you know, kids, there's lots of beach yeah. equipment and yeah. you, know, yeah. you get, you get kind of uh, strange looks when you want to lug out, lug the you know, EQ6 and all the other gear <laughs> into the back of the car. <laughs> when you've got all your, all your equipment's in the car ready to go, but there's no room for anyone else's luggage. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. It's great for that. You know, for yeah. The weekend. <laughs> Yeah, I need one because last year I went on the seaside with my 6R and a 35 millimeter lens. Okay. Um, so it was a complete overkill and yep. I'm planning on getting the Star Adventure this summer. Just get a bit Don't get, light. get a 4NX. Don't get the Star Adventure. Get the 4NX. That's one of the best trackers I've ever used. It it's just better. What, um, what, made it, what made it better? Just our curiosity. The friction motor, it, it's, it's actually, uh, my wife's also an astro astrophotographer and we've had a bunch we've had the star tracker sky watcher and it, it just doesn't work that well the periodic error on the fornex is one arc second oh what? really huh? that, yeah nice. it, it's such a small amount it has the this kind of brush motor that you have to reset but 135 millimeters we did 300 seconds with okay polar alignment stars are sharp so nice that's so good to know. And, and without good. guiding that's good to know yeah without guiding and you can you can take two scopes if you check out their videos you can take uh 20 something pounds so it's actually pretty cool you can use another scope as a counterweight basically mm -hmm. i actually haven't heard of the four nax mount so i'm kind of curious about it i'm just actually sorry i'm just looking it up yeah it's actually it's just so it's a different one so, so did uh, I. <laughs> Oh, that is that is different, eh? Yeah, that's. It's also huh. pretty light, and it's not that expensive. So yeah, it's a good. Yeah, is this um? Be, it is expensive. Case. Is it expensive? <laughs> it's about a thousand dollars for everything, uh, with the wedge. But it's it's not the wedge that you get in some of the sky watchers. Theos Optics has some really great pricing for it because I bought some accessories from it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's actually again the company who makes it make high-end observatory gear and they're not again they're very serious so i'd recommend mm -hmm. people look at it no it looks like a great great little amount that's for sure um is this something that is this a a company in in uh, europe there or somewhere yeah or it's a it's hungarian a, company I think. hungarian and company okay they have an adapter for pole master so if you really want to get precise mm -hmm. pole, polar alignment then for right. the second Pole That'd be good. Pretty. Yeah, yeah. I recently introduced a pole master to uh, to my setup. Uh, I was using the um, uh, e the polar alignment routine that was in EQ mod actually, and it worked well okay. for many years. wasn't any There wasn't uh, you know a, a need to change it other than I just got tired of getting up and down and you know uh, kneeling on the ground and and trying yeah. to look through the polar scope and that. So the the pole master certainly made it a lot easier, and it works really well. It's really easy to use. So I, I like it a lot. It's uh, nice that it's uh, that they have an option for it on that mount there, the Fornax mount. That what makes it really guys, appealing. What do you think of uh, the sharp cap alignment tool? I actually myself, I haven't used the sharp cap alignment. Um, I've used the three point polar alignment in Nina, and I've had mixed results mm -hmm. with that. Um, I've had I I had good polar alignment using the EQ mod uh, pole uh, polar alignment routine, okay. and I know it was good because my sharp my my stars were sharp and they were pinpoint. Uh, I didn't have you know any guiding issues. Um, and then I tried doing a polar alignment with the Nina three point polar alignment, and it said I was out an incredible amount. Um, and it just oh. didn't make, it didn't make sense to me. Um, I experimented with, uh, using it on, uh, pointed at Polaris and, and pointed away from Polaris. And again, 
I would do a polar alignment with it and then I go back and recheck it and it would tell me I was way out and yet yeah. I had just done it. So I didn't have a lot of confidence in that particular setup, that, that routine within Nina. Now I'm not saying that it doesn't work because I know some people that use it and swear by it, um, that the, it works really well. But for me, I didn't have enough confidence to really um, dedicate, you know, use de be dedicated to using it. So I um, went and got a pole master and I just, felt a little, I, I just felt a lot more confident using that to uh, uh, do the polar alignment. And it was so much easier, um, I found anyways. So uh, definitely something to uh, consider if you're looking at uh, uh, getting more precise polar alignment. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a pretty <laughs> face fair, system. In a way, you need 25, 30 points and all the sky to get a good, because I use the Sky X and they recommend 20 to 50 points. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. about local focal lengths. Yeah. And yeah, the reason yeah. the pole master and the other ones are so good is because they're so localized and they either mm -hmm. use plate solving or they use star mapping, right? Like what the pole master does. That's pole why they're master so precise. Does. That's right. Just, in these three stars in the sky, there's so much error in there. It's not even yeah. worth considering. Yeah, yeah, I'm still yeah, using exactly. the sharp cut uh, pole alignment and it works pretty good and it's uh, repeatable. So Is it? Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. I haven't had a problem. Since Re I've used repeatable it. is good yeah it's absolutely that repeatable. Was, yeah that's yeah, the one thing that i look for yeah yeah it's good um the um what's it, the zwo um what do they call it the little asir the, the SIR. asir yeah that's got mm -hmm. a very nice polar alignment routine as well does it yeah works effectively yeah good awesome yeah. okay good stuff yeah. uh, Okay. Um, Two thousand millimeters. If it's off, it, it's anything under a thousand. It's more forgiving. When you go over two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be for anything, though. I think any any type of polar alignment is going to be more challenging at longer focal lengths like that. So, but uh, I know I have a friend that uses uh, uh, the Sky X, and uh, he does uh, T point. Uh, he, uh, what is it? Three. I think he does three hundred points uh, when he does his setup. On so. yours. Uh, you can do 500 that's what i use is that right 500 even yeah i just i thought 300 was a lot so <laughs> <laughs> that's funny okay so um i dabbled in uh i i my main interest is emission nebulas um galaxies would come after that and that they're a distant second uh i'm not really into galaxy season uh i'm more into nebulas um star clusters they're okay. Um, I don't get overly thrilled with them. I got a friend that just loves shooting, you know, the, the globular star clusters, but uh, um, not not terribly exciting for me. So I thought I'd try some planetary and some lunar just for fun. And this these are some of the results that I got. Uh, nothing fancy. I've seen some amazing, amazing work done by planetary and lunar imagers out there. Um, and it is an art in itself. Uh, I can take I can take a really great image of a nebula, uh, you know, located, uh, you know, tens of thousands of light years or millions of light years away, but I have more difficulty doing planetary <laughs> nebula uh, or planetary imaging than, than uh, shooting deep sky nebula, which is funny. So, but that's an image of Jupiter that I took. You can see the red spot right there. And uh, that was taken with a, um, that would have been a nine and a quarter inch Celestron. And uh, again, using just a DSLR, I think it was a Canon. I think it was a D70, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that I was using at the time to take that. So that was fun. Um, and, you know, it was, wasn't as involved as doing the deep sky imaging where, you know, you have to spend a lot of time collecting data and then you have to spend a lot more time processing. So, you know, doing the, the lunar and the, the planetary certainly was, uh, was fun because it was quick. It was easy. And you got your, you pretty much got your um, results right away. There was no waiting involved. So your satisfaction was immediate with it. So that was fun to get into. This was a, an image I took of Comet Neowise, uh, took it from the backyard. I actually had a really great view of Comet Neowise from the backyard um, when it made its appearance. And I was really lucky to be able to, uh, to have that. I didn't have to travel to, uh, to get uh, some decent shots of it. So this was taken with a, it was taken on the Star Tracker, the Skywatcher Star Adventure. And um, it was, uh, what did I have mounted on this? I had the, uh, 
I, I had, it was the William Optic 71 millimeter refractor and I had, uh, it was just the DSLR camera that was hooked onto. And I can't remember if it was the 90 or the, uh, or the 70 that I had on there, but one of them I had on and, uh, I got some good results, uh, taking some images of Comet Neowise that way. And I was really happy with that. Um, that was, that's, that's actually really exciting to me to be able to, to shoot comets uh, like that, that make an appearance in a night sky. It's, it's uh, something different and uh, it's uh, really amazing to, to see these visitors uh, make their appearance and then they're gone and they, they may never return again. And in some cases, it might be a once in a lifetime opportunity you know, that we get to see them uh, in this way. So always, always enjoyable to, to image them and, and photograph them. Uh, so I've had a lot of different equipment over the years, and this is, uh, just showing some of the gear that I've got right now. So I've got my QHY filter wheel and it's loaded up with the, uh, Optolong LRGB filters. And I'm also using on this side right here, I'm using the Optolong three nanometer filters now. So the HL for the O3 and the S2, um, and those are working out uh, really nice. Uh, so far, I've had good results. I just need I need some clear skies in order to, to test them further. I just I haven't had that. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. So, I've actually got a reducer um, uh, from uh, the, well for the Esprit. I have an Esprit telescope, and I, I have a reducer for it that uh, was sent to me, um, and uh, I haven't been able to to use it yet because uh, I just haven't had the ability with the, the weather and that it's just been terrible. So QHY 268M is the primary camera that I'm using. And I also have a 268C that I use uh, on the doublet refractor. And this, the, the 268M is on the, the main telescope, which is this one right here. That's the main scope that I'm using right now, which is the Explore Scientific 127 carbon fiber. And on top, I've got piggybacked uh, the William Optics 71 millimeter with the QHY 268C um, attached to it as well. So those uh, that's that's the primary imaging rig right now, and that'll change uh, as I put, go back to the uh, the Esprit uh, 100. But uh, and I actually might have the uh, opportunity to test a Starfield. 115 triplet so i'm i'm very much looking forward to that as well so uh get uh get some uh get some clear skies and i'll be able to do some more uh more testing with these different well, telescopes where, where well, we get the, the printed the cable things these red 3d printed stuff ah <laughs> yeah i can actually um i can make that link available um maybe i can send it uh i can email it um there is a gentleman in british columbia canada that uh, makes these and he's got them he's designed them to fit with the uh, qhy cameras zwo cameras and uh um, i believe they would they would work with the um uh altair cameras as well any any uh, cylindrical uh, camera these are going to work with and uh they're actually really nice for cable organizing they keep your cables uh, uh connect like you know secure that they're not moving around they're not flopping around and um they fit really nicely over the camera with no you don't have to you know there's no screws involved or anything like that you're just basically slide it over it fits nice and snug and you can run your cables through it so you can actually um if i just go back here to this one here i've got some of the cables running here as we can see with those cable organizers and i've got a cable organizer on each camera that i'm using um, as well so these ones here that are on the scope they just have a uh, a channel that mm -hmm. is built into them that you can use a zip tie to wrap around the scope and secure it and then you can run mm -hmm. your cables in right and it, it actually works really nice so that is um that is a product that's available online to order and uh like i said the gentleman he uh he's gone through all the the work of designing them um, so that they work out of the box. Basically, you don't have any fit issues or anything like that. So uh, really nice, uh, really nice product. He was nice enough to send me a few to try out and I was really uh, quite happy with them. They worked quite well. Well, what's the weight of your, the payload on, on, on this rig? On this rig? I don't know. I have, I haven't really added it up and um, I'll just say heavy. <laughs> and, and, that's and my, 
my my uh, mount my mount is an older mount it's an eq6 from um this is testament i think to how they built things back in the day but you know um this is a eq6 mount from the 2006 2008 era uh Mm -hmm. so it's not it's not a new mount by any stretch but it still performs like a workhorse so uh, very impressive mount. I've got, and, yeah, I've got the NEQ6, which I think is the, which I think is the same mount. It's the thing. same. It came out after the EQ6. Yeah. The EQ6. This is one of the originals that came out. So it's still, you know, it's a great mount. Yeah, it's it a is great. a great mount. Yeah, and it really can carry a heavy payload. It carries a heavier payload than the new mounts do. So uh, it is a very nice mount. It likes. It actually prefers just you know meshing of the gears and that. It actually likes the the more weight that's on it. Uh, I find I have. Uh, bigger challenge with uh, getting things working properly when I just have a small scope on it and but I, I need that that big scope so that's why I piggyback and stuff just to give that extra weight and it just seems to like that so that's the scope set up in operation one clear night here uh, I don't remember when that clear night was but it was clear because we can see Orion in the back and uh it's uh, working away doing i think i was imaging if i'm not mistaken i was uh i think i was imaging the cone nebula if i'm not mistaken it was either the cone or the rosette one of the two in that area of sky so that was uh, fun that's another look at the setup um it's i don't have a fancy observatory like peter does um <laughs> my my roll off roof is a tarp <laughs> <laughs> but uh that is the 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 setup and uh it's all mounted all sitting on top of a sky shed pier so wayne parker over at sky shed observatories do they make the sky pods um they also produce some fantastic pier uh, piers as well um and this is one of one of their uh, piers and it works really nice it's bolted to the um it's actually bolted to the patio. So I haven't dug down into the ground, but this is a big patio with extra thick concrete and it doesn't go anywhere. And I drilled uh, through the, the patio and, and bolted this pier um, down on it and uh, uh, would later discover that my wife didn't really appreciate that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, she got used to it. So that was good. <laughs> Because it's not like it's moving, but it was really the only the only reason I, I put it there was because um, it was the only part of the sky that I had that was uh, gave me the maximum amount of sky, I guess I should say. It was putting it there. If I put it back further, if I had actually dug a hole and you know poured concrete to, to build a base and whatnot, it would be back further in the in the yard and there's just too many trees and whatnot cutting off sky. So this was this was the best place to put it. And I just had to wait till she left one Saturday when she was gone one Saturday. Saturday, pulled out the drill and started going. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> There's the uh, QHY 268 and the filter wheel, of course, with that fancy cable organizer. Um, I'll try and uh, what I'll try and do is pull up the, the link for that and I'll try and put it in the chat box for if I can, or maybe I'll send it over. I don't think I can put a link in the chat box, but I can send it over. And uh, you can comment on the YouTube channel as well if you want. Yeah. Oh yeah. I could put it there. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. 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 We do. There is commenting on YouTube, isn't there? I didn't know this. <laughs> okay. So, um, some more images I've taken recently. Uh, I don't want to, you know, hope I, is everyone still awake? <laughs> everyone wake up. <laughs> Come on. Do we have to, do we have to jump up and down, do some jumping jacks, get the blood flowing. <laughs> this yeah, is, uh, great. Great. Just, this is uh, M101. Continue. Yeah, I took this with a, a Vixen telescope, a VCL 200, if I'm not, a VC200L, I think it was. I uh, took that uh, again from the backyard. And uh, the camera was, uh, this was a, a 268C that I used on this. Um, actually, sorry, no, this was the 168C. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it was the 168C, the QHY 168C with the, the Vixen VC200L is what I uh, used to take that image. So I was actually quite happy with it. Um, again, I'm not overly thrilled with galaxies, but this one turned out really nice. It was one of the more uh, longer focal length images that I took, and I was I was quite pleased with the results that I got from it. Did you add any HL for this? This actually has no HL added to it. No, this is just straight um you know rgb from the 168c yeah i didn't have 
on the core. I can oh, do Jesus. that. This looks really good. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it turned out really nice considering, you know, it uh, was a long focal, focal length and you've got issues with, you know, seeing conditions and stuff can certainly blur, you know, your images more and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, the QHY168C is a great camera. It's not an expensive camera, but it's a great camera. And I, I thought it did a, a magnificent job overall. The, the scope and the camera worked really well. Um, another image, the Pac-Man Nebula. Uh, this was taken uh, with the Esprit 100 and the QHY268M and filter wheel and Optolong filters. And uh, this here is uh, IC63 and IC, is it 64? I can't remember the yeah. ghost, ghost nebula, yeah. So this one turned out, this is a combination of uh, uh, RGB and H-alpha. So it's an H-alpha RGB Great image. I, I uh, the H-alpha is really needed to make this uh, pop. Um, if you just shoot straight RGB, you, you don't really get much of a result from it. So it's the H-alpha data once it's laid in there that really, uh, really uh, uh, accentuates things and uh, makes it a lot more interesting. You have a video about it too, right? Yeah, I actually did a video on this, on imaging this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I did do that. That's right. Uh, California Nebula. This is taken with the Explorer Scientific 127 and uh, the 268M. Um, just my interpretation of it, uh, not uh, necessarily the most accurate in color, just my interpretation at the time. Same you, with this. Uh, yep. Sorry, thanks for Sean. Do you find that? So my, my biggest issue with none of my filters from any company, except a few that we shot that name, is mm -hmm. that oxygen is always going to have that dreaded halo. How does yeah. the Optolon deal with that? Well, it's interesting that you brought that up because um, this was taken with the three nanometer and um, the, the halo is not so bad. There's some, there's more pinched optic, uh, which I've made some adjustments for, but the halo isn't too bad. You can see it around there. Yeah. Now, this is this is with the first generation of the three nanometer O3 filter. Optolong has since released, and that's what's shipping. Uh, it actually okay. shipped first in Europe, and it was shipping now into North America. Um, they have version two, and that filter. It, I haven't. I have that filter now. They sent me one. I have it installed, but I haven't had a clear night to try it. So I. I all I can tell you is that they have fixed, they they supposedly have fixed the halo issue with the O3 filter. So that should make it much better. I did not experience any halo issues with the H alpha or the S2. Um, it's yeah. primarily just the O3 where we see the problem. And um, Optolong uh, in this particular you know case is what I'm using. And like I said, they came out with a, another version of it, which is shipping and uh, it supposedly works quite well. I had really good results, I thought, with the uh, first generation of that O3 filter. So the, o, uh, the second generation, uh, I can only imagine is, is going to be better. Okay, um, thank you. Because I yep. use the new buyers and they're, they're, again, they're coming to the levels of Chroma and Astrodon, but still yes. a little bit too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chroma is going to be, you know, uh, they're very expensive, uh, but they're really good. But, um, you know, if you're looking for an affordable, uh, good quality filter, certainly, uh, certainly, in my opinion, anyways, uh, the Optolong is a, is a great value. Um, they, they really do work well. I've been using the Optolong filters for the last uh, five years, actually, and I've had uh, uh, really good results. I was one of the early adopters of the Optolong filters when they first started uh, coming onto the market. So uh, M42 taken with the uh, uh, Explore Scientific 127 again, and this was uh, using the Optolong 3 nanometer filters, so H-alpha, O3, S2. Um, once again, my interpretation of it, I just decided to do something a little different and, uh, uh, but it was, it was a good test of the filters to see how well they, uh, they would perform. Um, and again, the color is, is just artist prerogative. That's all. So you either, you, you either like it or you don't like it. And if you don't like it, I don't want to hear. <laughs> One question. It's not that I don't like it. I think your your interpretation is that you masked the core in on oxygen and left everything else in sulfur and hydrogen, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Beautiful. So, 
Yeah. Oh, thanks. 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 I appreciate that. You're allowed to stay on this Zoom. <laughs> I won't get I, you. I got one coming up, so we'll, we'll look at it. <laughs> so I get paid. We'll <laughs> Awesome. And uh, just one more image that I took uh, with this setup. So this is uh, LRGB of uh, M45 uh, using, again, the Explorer Scientific and the QHY 268M with the Optolong filters. So I was actually pretty happy with that, uh, that image as well. It turned out really nice. Some great detail in it. And uh, I was able to control the stars. Not too bad. Do you uh, do you use a regular luminance for your luminance channel? Or do you use any kind of Velcro or any kind of? No, device? I don't. No, I just use a just a standard UVIR cut filter is all I'm using. Um, nothing nothing like an L Pro or anything like that. I I I, I have used the L Pro uh, filter um, with my one shot color setups and. Uh, it does work very nice. It's a, it's a, it's a nice filter, but, uh, for my monochrome, uh, imaging setup, I'm just using a, a straight luminance filter and, uh, uh, with the RGB and the H alpha and oxygen three and S two. Beautiful processing and the interflux nebulosity is really. Yeah, it, really it really, nice. yeah, it came out really nice. Actually. I was quite happy with the result. I was happy with the, the results, the, the sensitivity on the camera, um, and being able to capture that. And, uh, I was happy being able to, uh, bring it out a little more in the processing when I worked on it. So the processing of course, is something that we all know takes a lot of time. Um, you can, you can do them quick or you can, you know, really take a lot of time. This one took me, uh, probably, um, I don't even know how many hours, but I would probably say I put in over 10 hours just uh, processing it different ways and trying different techniques to see what would work best. But that is a major component of astrophotography is the image processing. You know, it's, uh, it's fun to collect data and sometimes it can be frustrating. Sometimes it can be easy, but the, the real work comes in when you got to sit down and uh, start processing the data and turn it uh, into that beautiful image that we, you know, can share with friends. Uh, this is an image I took of uh, NGC 1333, and I really enjoy this image because it really captured a lot of the faint dust uh, that is all around this nebula region, and it wasn't fancy equipment. Um, I, I have this picture here because it shows part of what I use. So I used the William Optics 71 millimeter for this, um, but it was not this camera. Um, I was actually using an older, when I took this image, it was uh, a QHY 8L, if I'm not mistaken, was the camera that I used. Uh, was it the L or not, or was it just the 8? I can't remember, but it was an older one from back in the day. And uh, it did a really nice job, and I really enjoy this image. Um, I think it turned out uh, well, uh, considering the equipment wasn't uh, the, the most fancy equipment uh, out there. That's an epic and, shot. I, I, I took this a uh, sure. couple of days ago. Um, mm -hmm. No, not days ago, uh, weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I tried it with, I think, two or three hours and there was just nothing. So um, Yeah, this no, is this, is, this is about, um, this image here is about 20 hours. No, sorry, 15. It says right there. It's yeah. 15 hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 15 but hours what, of data. So, and you can go I longer than that, but what's that? What sky would you in? Because this doesn't like. Uh, like okay, well, this is, <laughs> yeah, this uh -huh. is this is this is not taken from the city. Um, so this is up <laughs> at this is up at our cottage, which is in northern Ontario, and we have a Bortle Bortle three sky there. So, um, fifteen yeah, hours in a Bortle three, and you get some really fantastic uh, deep sky uh, objects popping out like this. Yeah, because I'm in a Bortle four. Like, uh, okay, they couldn't awesome. do it. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't yeah. do it. It just didn't it, work. I've like, tried shooting this in my sky. I'm on an average of Bortle seven where I mm -hmm. in, uh, at home, and uh, I've tried shooting this, and I I can shoot hours and hours and hours and hours, mm -hmm. and I just don't seem to get anywhere with it. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, very I gave up after like five hours because it wasn't. <laughs> it, it just wasn't worth it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to go somewhere remote and try it again. You do, year. yeah, yeah. In some cases, some objects you're gonna have to go remote. You're gonna have mm. to make that uh, that travel and, and commit to that time and sitting in a field somewhere and you know whatever it entails, mosquitoes or or the cold, and, and uh, you know get these images. But um, yeah, this is 
certainly you know a great target if uh, you have the 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 right sky for it um i don't know anyone else do you is what what is everyone shooting in in terms of bordel scale i'm uh, in a bordel seven peter what are you seven seven eight seven eight okay all right so you have it bad there what about everyone else for me it's 34. oh nice okay yeah. that's great that's, that's okay. good yeah i am five to six five to six so that's four. still okay that's good yeah, yeah that's great. nice because i'm lucky uh, yeah what do you got Bortle nine <laughs> seven no uh i'm actually in, a, in one of the parts of silicon valley that's less like polluted by the bay but yeah 10 minutes from here it's seven eight and nine and nine in san francisco but i go yeah. to Bortle two uh in the sierras where like Ooh. you said five hours of data oh. will yep. blow your socks off and yep. if you want to mm. see dust you're going to be cold and miserable it's that's right. Just how it works. Yeah, it's just how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's part of the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and then we're <laughs> back to the beginning. So, um, again, if anyone is interested in checking out my website, it's visibledark.ca. And uh, you can, uh, as we've already plugged it many times, you can check me out on YouTube as well, Visible Dark on YouTube. Sean, that was fantastic. That was a great journey through your process that's mm -hmm. and we see we all see the dedication uh when you're doing a presentation with pics inside that's uh, that's the most the yeah most epic thing i can imagine yeah that's it the is most yeah. astrophotographer thing <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, kick Adam Block off the off the off the board of Pixel Insight. Put Sean in there. He's he's empowered more people. I think that's just my. <laughs> Well, you know what? I, I, I used Photoshop for the longest time and uh, it, it was great. It did a, a fantastic job. Um, I first tried PixInsight back in 2017, I think it was, 2018, somewhere in there. And uh, I, I hated it. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. The terminology that was being used was I didn't understand it. And uh, I actually went back to Photoshop. And I was on Photoshop for, you know, another half year or so. And then I, a friend of mine was very heavy into PixInsight. And uh, he um, he said, you know, let me show you how it's done and stuff. Let me show you what we're doing and that. And uh, it was through him that I actually ended up getting hooked on it and decided to really dig in and learn it and try and understand it and learn um, how to image process it with it. And now that that, you know, that, that took a bit, it took about a year to get really proficient with it. But um, now that, uh, now that I am, it's a wonderful program and uh, worth every penny, I think. Uh, and they're doing a fabulous job with it. Oh, in our industry, there is no beautiful software, except for, I will say this, for mm. Filippo's work. I love Filippo. Yeah. His uh, Prima Luce software and videos are always at least beautifully Italian crafted. So right. yeah. uh, there's no beautiful yeah. software in astronomy except for Prima Luce. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a great salesman, Filippo, is always there. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still using a, a combination of PixInsight and Photoshop, actually. Because I can't wrap and my some head around things yeah. completely, and it's just yep. easier to do some um, stuff in Photoshop, like masking. S some of the stuff. Now that's interesting that you say. Yeah, see, I haven't used Photoshop in quite a while, so I find the masking not necessarily um, as easy to do anymore, just because I forgot a lot of it. Um, but uh, I know there's a lot of people that do do that. They use PixInsight and they use Photoshop, and they come out with some fantastic results. Um, um, what are you doing? What are, I'm just curious. What are you doing specifically in Photoshop com compared to? So, what is your process then? You you calibrate a line stack in photo or in PixInsight and do some basic processing, and then move to yeah. Photoshop? I do the basic processing. In, I do the basic processing in PixInsight and move to Photoshop mm -hmm. up to a certain point and go back to PixInsight for oh some interesting stuff again. Okay. Like so what is it? What else. is it that you're doing in Photoshop then that you're not doing in PixInsight? Um, mostly repairing stuff I mess up in PixInsight. Uh oh, honest. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just some processes I just haven't learned yet in PixInsight. I yeah, absolutely. Okay, Photoshop. yeah, and that's so, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's easier just to get it done in Photoshop. So yeah, it's quicker for me because I'm a little bit of a lazy processor, more or less. <laughs> yeah, that's um, okay. I, 
I've become a little lazy too in my processing. I found new ways <laughs> to cut corners. <laughs> Easier. Not too many people would notice unless they pixel peep, but you know, we don't That's pixel correct. peep, right? Yeah. No, no. no. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, be before we continue <laughs> to our little round, um, there was a question from Alexander popping up. Uh, Sean, how did you power your setup when going out in the cold with your pickup? Oh, um, I actually had uh, two marine batteries uh, that were, um, I don't know if you guys call them marine batteries over there, yeah. but they're, yeah, um, two marine batteries and... Uh, Uh, power setup that uh, could plug everything into basically and run the uh, laptop and run the, uh, the the telescope and so forth through that uh, an inverter uh, that was connected up to the two batteries and that would uh, that would give me more than enough power to run the whole night even in the cold weather and uh, we were out there uh, when it was uh, you know the colder months and stuff we were out there at uh, six o'clock seven o'clock at night and we didn't leave till five in the morning sort of thing or five thirty in the morning and I had good power throughout the whole uh, night so um, it was just a lot of it was a lot to carry around uh, to move around and, and whatnot so um, that's uh, like I said earlier in my presentation that's why I sort of started doing more from home because I found that with a, um, a setup that was more permanent I could take advantage of clear skies and get more imaging done than I, I would if I was traveling places but um, I still I still miss those times they were, they were fun we had a lot of good times uh, you know going out and sitting under the stars and, and you know talking about life and, and the universe Yeah, I, I think, but uh, it's a it's a bit different when you can do it at home. It's also it's also nice because it's super easy. Uh, mm -hmm. you just uh, power everything up and can start imaging. But this feeling is a bit gone then. This this uh, you don't have quite the same connection because you yeah. yeah like in my case I'm doing everything once I power it up I'm doing everything from inside yeah yeah, me um, too, yeah. so I'm not outside experiencing the night sky but mm -hmm. you know there is there's advantages and disadvantages um, to, to to everything. Um, certainly, you know, going out to a dark site, you have the, uh, the advantage of being able to experience the night sky and see the stars and, and connect with them. Um, but, you know, working from home and imaging, you have the advantage of being able to, uh, get it all going, basically not have to worry about it, uh, mm -hmm. set it and forget it, uh, grab a beer and go to bed or something. <laughs> well, I also you know? like when you go to, when you go to dark skies, There's always a guy, and this happens to me every time when I set up my telescope. There's always a guy who comes over and says, "What the hell's wrong with your cables?" And I mean, when when you're in the dark and you're setting up your gear, you're not going to do the best cable man. Let let's man, yeah, yeah. be honest. But for me, there's always a guy who comes in and says, "What <laughs> constellation always... are you looking at?" I said, "None." But what's with your cables? I'm like, "Shut up and get out of here." <laughs> <laughs> He's critiquing your cables. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it, funny. It happened like three times I did imaging, three times some guy came over, always a different guy and says, "What the go what's going on with this cables thing here?" Yeah. We always so. we always had the um the the late arriver. So everyone would be oh, set yeah. up and would sometimes be imaging and some guy would pull in with his headlights on full and sure, yeah. you know, it, it was just disrupt everything and everyone's like, "Oh my god, what is this guy doing?" <laughs> But he apologized. But he didn't Yeah, yeah, they get out, oh, "Sorry, sorry." And you're like, "Oh, it's okay." You know, meanwhile, you're just grumbling away. You just ruined my five minute exposure. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, uh, I heard, uh, Iwan, you have to left uh, in a couple of minutes, 10 minutes or so. So I would yeah. give you the stage to share your screen uh, that you can show us some things. Yeah. Well, let me start by saying the reason I popped so many uh, hints at uh, Sean's channel is because a lot of the stuff that I do today is inspired by his videos. And I want to thank you, sir, personally, Sean. Things like uh, noise, noise reduction on the TGFD noise and the uh, uh the linear denoise they're all kind of videos i've seen you mm -hmm. kind of handle it and to me it's inspired me to make my own workflow so first personally thank you for inspiring awesome. a lot of us to know thank how you. to process how to use pink insight that's great i also use photoshop because of photoshop i own my gear because i'm a designer <laughs> and photoshop was my main tool yeah. but it, it, it's it's the tool that works the best so you can do it in notepad though nobody cares as long as you produce whatever you like exactly it doesn't yeah. matter so exactly 
let me share my screen and show you guys some stuff. Uh, hold on one sec. I will close this. So let me start by saying one of my images has recently been uh, mentioned in one of the awards for best astrophotography of the year. Wow. I think it's Save a Star or something like that. This made the mention. Of course, an image from Chile won because it's fair, isn't it? And we can all image from the Atacama. <laughs> image from Chile. <laughs> yeah, half a meter telescope. This is You're disqualified. <laughs> I was, this is just a mere 12-inch telescope from TS Optics uh, reflector at 2,000 millimeters, not a half a meter telescope. So this is one of the images that Rosette I took with it last year. They mentioned it as one of the nicest ones. Again, the reason I show it, because I use Photoshop to change the colors. Uh, mm -hmm. to emphasize, emphasize the actual red in here. So I actually tweak yep. the colors in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So this is an older one. So now this is one I've just finished with uh, Ricard de Honder's uh, 200F3. It's a fantastic scope, but um, with speed comes tilt. Uh, it's just how it works. Uh, this yep. is actually a really amazing detail. The camera I used here is a QHY600M. Uh, it's about 20 hours, but again, wow. Every time you you have fast gear, you have things like this, and it's just it's normal. You have to deal mm. with it. This is yeah. basically built yeah. on a very fast scope. Yeah. That's why I, I'm saving Torsten the the pain. So you see, one corner is fine, the other one isn't. Uh, <laughs> since then, I I have fixed the tilt uh, through many hours of CCD inspector and Allen keys. So this is the rosette I took. Uh, That's beautiful. So That's then, some. Fantastic detail. Can you just go back and zoom in again? That was just some fabulous detail that was captured there. Yeah. That's what yeah, this, so the, the good, yeah. 600M you said, right? The 600M Pro, not really a difference. This is a shot using uh, high gain mode. Uh, yeah. It's about 20 odd hours. I had kind of variable seeing. This is using chroma filters. Um, yeah. I kind of invested in some and I was lucky enough to find them at Household prices, not Ferrari prices. So I have two sets and I'm never going to sell them. Um, so yes, the 600, absolutely incredible camera. This is 600 millimeters. I took this last year with 2000 millimeters and a CCD and the, the quality is almost there. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we're zooming in a lot here. Yeah. There's a lot of star reduction. There's some noise reduction, if oh, yeah. you guys can see yeah. here. It's, it's kind of natural. I'm actually going to print this pretty big being 60 megapixels. Mm -hmm. And I twisted the rosette. I know people twisted. This is my representation of it. And yep. I was really struggling to get this limb here that yeah. I really, really... This is yeah. fantastic, yeah. It is. It's yeah, great. it is fantastic. Yeah, it's great. I also like um, it like that because I'm seeing the skull inside of the rosette nebula. Uh, no, there is no again, skull. No, 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 no. There, there is, is no skull. No skull and bones. I mean, skull. if you see it, then maybe... Yeah. If you uh, want to see it, then you always see it, but I just can't. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I, I just, uh oh, I you know what? I see, I see it. it. I see the skull. Oh, <laughs> you see it? you just the, ruined it yeah. for me. The nose bone <laughs> thing in the middle. Yeah, I can see it. it. Yeah, yeah. And the jawline and yeah, yeah, yeah. The eye sockets. I cannot. I'm happy. I'm gonna move yeah. on. So, uh, so this. <laughs> Thanks for actually, uh, This is uh, using a washout color, and uh, the reason I brought it up, I didn't want to share this because it's not one of the images I really like. It's about four hours of imaging with a QHY 128C. Fantastic camera, but in Bordel 7, when you're trying to see nebulosity, you get noise, you get yep. muck. And get the other noise. thing that I, I find frustrating is sky glow. So when a target moves into a sky, light polluted sky, so does the light, it moves, with the, moves around the light pollution. So flats almost become imp impossible with a, a color camera because your camera and your scope move to a different part with a different light pollution composition. So no matter what you do, I've used the, I have a radiant quad. It doesn't do anything. It just, it, it basically suppresses light. But at the end of the day, this is where you have to be cold and miserable to get a good image of this. I will try this <laughs> in a month. We'll see how it goes. So awesome. again, not an impressive image. It's, it's okay. Uh, this was the Ricardi Honders as well at F3. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I wanted to show. Wow. Uh, this nice. is one of the images oh. of the, the Orion Nebula shot with my Richie Cretian at 1700 millimeters at 5.4 with nice. uh, ZW6200. This is about 18 hours of SHO. The reason I asked about the blue because the oxygen is really prelevant in the Orion Nebula, as you guys can yep. see. Uh, yep. I was actually really happy to see the, the tra trapezium. trapezium. 
Mm-hmm. This, this is, is 600 second exposures. So those are uh, sorry. How long were they? 600 seconds. Those 600, and you still managed to pull that out. So what uh, what mode were you using on the camera? So I was on, I was just using the ZWO. So it's not really got a mode. It's just Unity. Just, uh, I think gain 100. I think just and, a gain of 100. Uh, it yeah, wasn't like like is, a Unity gain or something like that. Just a gain. I think gain 100, offset 40 or something. Right. Uh, that's the setting that I've that's seen. That's really impressive, yeah, considering the, the amount of uh, exposure time. Um, to be honest with you, I find that both both cameras are really good. The thing about the QHY is it's got better quality control in a lot of places. So the USBs don't move around. The power switch doesn't move around. And mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. more repeatable. The ZW is a really good camera. But it can have, let's say, oily issues and other stuff that people know. Yes, yeah, um, I read anyway. about that. From uh, I did oh, about what ZW are we talking right now? The, the two, 6200 th- mm Pro. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. The, the top of the line, I guess you could call it. It's a, it's a beautiful camera. I think I've created some nice images with it, boy. And again, this is beautiful detail in an object so far away. Uh, with I had really bad seeing, so I was struggling to get decent mm-hmm. stars, full of half maximum of four. Um, luckily, you know, I've learned a few things from Sean over here, so I'd be able to pull, <laughs> especially this part. I'm really excited to see the detail in here. It's great. Yeah, you did a really nice job with the core. It's uh, always very difficult on uh, M42. So that in previous images, a... I used to just do multiple images. Uh, next, this is just the HA Stardust version. It's just something that I use as my desktop. And you can see I hadn't done a proper job with the... Um, HDR multi-transform, so the core is blown out. And but still, it it really shows a lot of beautiful detail. And I didn't overdo it with Topaz or any other tool. I wanted to keep it as as close to what I shot as possible. It's beautiful enough, detail. Enough of that on in in our hobby where people oversaturate images. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you see that a lot. Yeah, that's true. So this is another image of the <laughs> monkey. I actually not going to publish this. The reason is I was using this mode called uh, extended well depth on the QHY 600. And I was trying to do uh, nine to 1200 second exposures because uh, I'm used to the OCCD and my mount can probably do that. Uh, the problem was that I was getting really weird noise uh, patterns that I couldn't fix with darks. I'm not really happy with the quality of this. It's, it's good. I mean, it looks good, but there's a lot of weird random noise in here that in high gain mode, you don't even see. So I'm actually going to reshoot this in high gain mm-hmm. later on. I like it. It's nice, but it's just, it, it's not enough. And again, I didn't catch the bottom part, which is going to be the hard part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's, it's a nice it's image. A, thank you. Shot with the, with the TS Optics uh, scope. Uh, well, not TS Optics, so Fucina Stellare Telescope Express scope that, that I got and fixed. So an amazing, stunning scope. Um, this is one that my mm-hmm. wife has been asking me for years, the Spaghetti mm-hmm. Nebula. Mm-hmm. I have a white field refractor, uh, a little TS Optics 61, but I just, I wanted to shoot it with the Hondas because an F3 is supposed to be incredible. But again, this is with the tilt fixed, so it's decent. I mean, you can see still some distortion, but with the Honders, it's just what you have to deal with with a full frame sensor to work mm-hmm. at F3. The problem how many, is, uh, how many hours is this? It's about 20 hours, to be honest, on okay. F3. Wow. The problem is that the ZWO at that Unity setting, it created these weird dots in the center and you can see them almost like lines. Mm-hmm. They're really faint. So that just destroyed all all of the all of the data that i had because i had to lower the unity to make those uh, the sorry the offset to make those disappear hmm. and i'm actually going to reshoot it the honders is probably set to reshoot it next week the detail again collect the data collected for 20 hours of both ha and hydrogen is spectacular because i've seen it done with many many more hours but it's not it's not something that i want to publish just because the core noise was blowing everything else up and I could not process it. Um, so last image I've been working on is the seagull. Uh, again, wow. this is with the Anders. That's nice. So yeah. I've been having some issues with the seeing. Uh, it's it's just been windy in California. We have another yeah. storm coming in. Yeah. Um, I do really like the details here. 
again, I haven't really processed it. Uh, I still, I think I have like 20 hours of data, about eight of each. I'm using uh, HA as luminance and I'm, I'm throwing some HA and sulfur just to get some of the red out because there's not a lot of sulfur in this. And I'm not really happy with it. Um, my whole full width half maximum is between six and 10 and I really want to cap it at seven. So I have to, a lot of frames to throw out because of seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, sorry, I really like the Stardust version to be honest. It's just, um, nice. it's yeah. pretty breathtaking. It's using Starnet 2.0, but you can see the fact that the stars are kind of big from the mm -hmm. scene, the stars mm -hmm. are showing up. And I haven't used Photoshop to clean them up. It's not hard. You just have to use content fill, but yeah. Um, but again, the, the last thing I wanted to bring up, and this is more of a, of a geek thing, right? So uh, I've been talking to a lot of my friends about using luminance and narrowband and a lot of the gear we have is always oversold and misrepresented by this they'll make you the best astrophotographer but one of the things that i was curious by looking at some of the stuff you did sean and others is what happens if i use a quad filter in this case the radiant quad mm -hmm. as a luminance filter for narrowband because technically it's true luminance it contains sulfur it contains hydrogen it contains oxygen right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i did a couple of hours on the pelican with that filter it has haloing, so I don't know why. It's very annoying. It's not a cheap filter, as you guys know. It's the price of a chroma. And in inside the blue channel uh, or the blue wavelength, it does halo. So mm -hmm. I, I was my plan here, and this is maybe for next time, is to do about 10, 15 hours of radiant data and use it as true luminance for this and just see what happens. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be good. Uh, but this is a, a project I want to do in the that's, future. Some of my friends. Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting project. I might actually try it myself. <laughs> you got my curiosity yeah. peaked. Yeah. I mean, again, I think that there's uh, too many people have used the radiant filter as a light pollution hack, and the same with that extreme. What if we actually use it to collect what we need, which is real mm -hmm. luminous, not make it synthetically? Yeah. I think that's it. I had another photo of the moon, but again, I'm not a I'm not a uh, planetary imager i'm not good at it i will leave the professionals to do it <laughs> i love nebulas and galaxies as well out for other people i I'm, I'm happy with ours um cool thank you guys for letting me show this and uh, it's awesome thanks for sharing yeah. uh, thanks for sharing Aaron. here okay so i think uh well what happened okay now it's working um I think we go to the next one. Peter, would you take the stage? Just, just one more thing. Uh, oh, Jan, yeah, there sure. was a question for you on the YouTube comment, comment section. And Mark is asking you if you tried using an IR pass through the filter for the luminance. An IR what? Say that. IR, pass. IR pass. Infrared pass filter for luminance. For for the luminance yeah. yeah so is that for narrowband or is that for one shot color i'm trying i to have understand. no idea this is just the question uh, okay so uh, a couple of things uh luminance filter is a uv ir cut filter so it does filter out ir and, and uv but um for narrowband if that's the question you cannot do that it's you're not going to see any nebulosity any emission the reason we do luminance for nebulosity is because you want to enhance the actual nebulosity and reduce the stars. That's the opposite of luminance. For maybe the color camera, I did have a luminance filter on top. It doesn't make a difference. My future goal is to put a chroma low glow as a luminance filter and see if I can gather luminance data and then bend the color. But that's just something else. Hope that answered the question. If not, just message me, Mark, and I'll answer it on Instagram or something. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, maybe he is he. He thinks about uh, the reduction of the seeing effect in IR, but uh, as you as you said, um, an H alpha uh, light source is totally blocked, or every light source in narrowband is blocked with an IR pass filter. So it, there would just be nothing uh, on the sensor of the nebulosity that you want to have. So yeah. There's another question. Speaking of fast reflectors, would 0.95 max field? Oh, I can I can answer that because I tested okay. this 
exact same um, equipment. So basically, it was working pretty well. I got some good images, uh, but you have to be careful with your collimation and tilt because this makes your telescope around f3.9, 8, okay? And it's very sensitive to um, a miscollimation and a bit of a tilt. Because I know I had some tilt and the stars on the left were just a bit elongated. But otherwise, the detail, detail in the general was pretty good. Yeah, I so, used it too for a few nights and I have to say it's, it's a good um, corrector. It works. For anybody who wants to use a fast scope, for God's sakes, use an APS T sensor. If you're in UK like... or some of us, there's a lot of clouds. A fast scope can compend someday. No, I mean fast scopes are amazing, but do not use a full frame sensor. You're gonna you're gonna make or anything crop sensor and lower, you're gonna be really happy because yeah. all of the problems that you just enumerated will not show that outside the image. Yeah, I used I used the crop sensor and it was still showing a bit. But I think yeah. that was mostly because of my collimation. Um, you have to be really careful with that. Yeah, with good collimation, it works absolutely on APS-C. Um, I also wouldn't go full frame on it. Um, you'd also likely experience a lot of uh, vignetting with this um, reduce or comma corrector combination. Okay, guys, I would suggest uh, we are continuing our round. And if any one of the viewers have questions or something uh just drop it in the comment box we will uh, check them out in the yeah later on uh, after we are completed. sorry guys i have to run it was a pleasure as always sean you're an inspiration to um, a lot of us keep doing what you're doing man thank you, uh, thank you so thank much you yeah it was nice to meet you goodbye have a good one yeah. have a have nice day one. everyone bye bye yeah. bye, -bye. Uh, all right so torsen shall i get going with uh, yeah, sure. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, sure. Um, so let's start with the, this is taken with the um, Samyong uh, 135 millimeter. It's the large Manchelani cloud. Just managed to fit it in to the frame. The camera is the uh, 2600 um, mm, ASI 2600 mm. And I used here the um, high speed, the beta high speed, um, uh, ultra, the ultra high speed narrowband filters. So this, this was HA and O3. Um, and uh, yeah, so pretty happy with it. Uh, how, many, uh, how many hours is that, Peter? So this was about 15 hours. 15 hours okay and incredible. was this on a it is incredible was this uh did you piggyback this uh this no, gear no, this on was, um just 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 the uh samyong on the on the mount nothing else just on the mount eh? okay yeah. all right yeah. wow really Peter, nice. and f, what i've stopped in years so this was f uh 2.8 and how are the corners like oh fine, absolutely fine this is the amazing thing about this lens right so I have all sorts of problems with the Rasa at F2. And then I go to the Samyong, you know, 135 at F2.8, um, even actually lower, you know, even at sort of F2, corners are actually fine. Yeah, I guess you got a good uh, sample because I have I have yeah. stilt and the elongated corners with the Samyong 135 and my 1600 i still have some coma and tilt so even if you at f4 3.5 somewhere there i still have some coma so you got lucky with it yeah you are uh, really lucky i did have to fiddle I... with the back focus a bit i had to play around with uh, 0.2 millimeter um uh, uh, uh spaces you know just to get the spacing right but mm -hmm. once i had the spacing right it you know it's 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 great it's uh, perfect. Um, so then I went back and you know, I, I don't get Orion for that long because of, because of a huge oak tree in my garden, unfortunately. So I, I, I tend to catch it after it's crossed the uh, meridian. Um, uh, it's an image I, I captured last year and I wanted to add a bit more HA, which I did. 
Um, this was taken with the Rasa and the 1600 mm. Uh, so, so I hadn't uh, yet upgraded to the 2600. Um, and there you can see if you go to the you know, the, the Rasa, of course, has the, you know, the, the, the nasty spikes that you get from the cables. But there, you know, if you go to the corners, you start to see actually not so bad in that corner. Um, actually, uh, no, this came out of, this came out of, came out okay. Uh, Peter, what camera is it? So this was the uh, the sixteen hundred, so the the okay. old SI sixteen hundred. Um, it's a fantastic say, yeah. image, Peter. Thank you. It's really Thanks. nicely done. Yeah. Um, then. Um, this is again an image I took uh, towards the end of last year, uh, NGC 1097, with the um, Edge HD 800 and um, the 294 um, mm, um, and uh, added a bit of HA, uh, which I didn't have before. I think last time on the on the last show I showed this image, but it was without the HA, so I've got the HA in in this one. Um, yeah, pretty happy with uh, with the 294. It's got slightly larger pixels, so it fits quite nicely with the, the focal length. Um, it's a 40, 1488 millimeter focal length, so it fits quite nicely at that focal length. Um, then, of course, you know, Eta Carina. Um, this was with, with a 61 EDPH uh, 2. This is just um, an RGB image with the 2600 MC Pro. It's the one shot color. Um, and I didn't do much. Uh, I did a bit of work on the halo, on the, um, there's a bit of chromatic aberration with that telescope. So I had to remove the, the chromatic aberration um, on some of the brighter stars uh, on this image. But I didn't, I didn't do much else. I didn't do any sort of, um, other than a stretch and playing around with curves a little bit, I, I wanted to keep that natural color. Um, I didn't want to mess with the, the blues on the core, which some people do. You know, you can kind of play around with with uh, with the color a little bit in the in the core, and get the blues. But I just wanted to get the natural color for this uh, version of the image. You, um, Peter, if I can just ask yeah. a question real sure. quick. You said that you had fixed the chromatic aberration with stars. What exactly were you doing uh, for that uh, um, purpose? I was basically, <laughs> I was uh, using, um, a, a created a mask um, mm -hmm. uh, with, um, uh, um, created, created, uh, with, um, with um, Starnet++. Plus Plus. So it's created mm -hmm. a, a mask, a star mask. Yeah. Um, and then just um, play it around with curves, just to remove the blue, oh, okay. it's, it's a kind of purple halo that you get around some of the brighter stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, essentially, just play it around with the blue and the red and green um, curves in, 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 in curves, just to, I to minimize that. And, yeah, then I put okay. the star, and then I put the stars back. Great. Good. I move the stars, play it around with, uh, with curves, and then put them back. That's nice. So Great. Probably, Good idea. Yeah. Hopefully TS, I think TS are going to send me a new objective lens for that telescope. Uh, they've said that, uh, you know, that the sample that they have um, has managed to deal with these, uh, these artifacts. So hopefully when they send me the new, the new objective, I'll be able to sort this out. Um, then, um, Recently finished this image. This is a again with a twenty six hundred MC uh, with the Optolong um, an extreme filter. Um, this is using a, also the the um, the uh, sixty one EDP, EDPH um, and um, again about twenty hours of, of data on this one. Nice, this really great amazing. detail. Yeah. So this yeah. is the uh, this is the Bella supernova remnant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, quite happy with. I mean, uh, for a one shot color, it's has come out. Quite yeah, nice. that's cool. It turned out great for a one shot color. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think it's brighter than the spaghetti we have, or it's the same kind of brightness? Sorry, as 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 the spaghetti, it's yeah. it's, it's very faint in HA. Um, O three does come out 
quite well in the in in, in this image, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, it's just the opposite definitely... of the spaghetti. Yeah, because H half is a um, bit more dominant than the other. I would, you know, I would say at least at least twenty hours um, on this on this target. Um, and then another another part of the of the Vela supernova remnant. This is the Pencil Nebula. Uh, this was with the twenty six hundred mm um, and the ninety four EDPH, so the slightly bigger version mm. of the EDPH mm. um, series. Can you zoom in on that there? It's yeah, really fabulous. Happy, really happy with, with this image. Um, I would like mm. to have put great, yeah. That's for mm -hmm. 40 hours. I think I think it deserves 40 hours. <laughs> uh, I think 20 is kind of you know, if you really zoom in, you start to lose a bit of the yeah. I mean it's, there's just plenty of it. There's a lot of detail there though. Yeah. It's really nice. But I think 40, I think 40 hours would really <laughs> Be, be magic with with this uh this target so that's this was, dedication uh, by the time that's... i get to third by the time i get to 30 hours i'm pulling my hair out i don't know if i can keep <laughs> yeah. imaging so this was uh not this was with a mono and and um the standard beta ha and o3 filters so i, I would, i'd love to get the the narrow narrower band pass uh, versions of those filters and mm -hmm. uh, i think that would really make a, a huge difference as well mm. but uh, no it came out pretty well um and yeah that's that was the last image uh, that fantastic I had, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. about a week ago well Great. you're lucky that you're able to get some imaging done <laughs> yeah, no, it's been, it's been, right yeah. it's always January, February, March are pretty good in Cape Town. Um, Is that right? Okay. Then, as 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 the season changes, then you get some poor weather, and uh, and winter it's hit and miss. You'll get you know a week of good good weather, and then you'll, you'll get two or three weeks of bad weather. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Great. great. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Robert, do you want to show something? Yeah, of course. Um, I will try to share my screen. An astro image. You? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to watch your well, you got to watch your questioning there. <laughs> Do you want to of show course. something? <laughs> that was a little open ended. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Okay. Uh... Oh, it doesn't let me. Okay. But here it tells um, that you has have started oh, okay. screen sharing. Yeah, here we there go. It is. Yeah. Okay. If you can see the horse, it's fine. Yes, then you can see it. Good. Yeah, amazing. Okay. Yeah, I dig I dig it out again because we talked about it H alpha, and this mm -hmm. is also just an RGB image uh, with a one shot color, no nice. H alpha added. Very so great. there's actually a lot of um, H alpha in this region. It's very colorful too. The image. What uh, camera did you use? Uh, I used the ASI 071 MC Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, the one with nice. with the older yeah uh, DSLR sensor. Right. No, no, it's very nice. And on this one, too. Oh, beautiful. So this yeah. is all, also uh, there is no H alpha involved. You got very nice control on the star there. It's a difficult mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Turned out well. Uh, I took these two with the, what is it? An ED, an 18 oh, is that right? Okay. ED. Is it, um, how many hours? Did you say how many hours for those images? Uh, no, the horse set is about like three and a half hours. Three and a half. That's it. Mm, and bad. four, about four, four. Um, Right. Cassiopeia, coast of well, you're, you're in a you're in a nice portal sky though too so yeah it works yeah. pretty well yeah. on, it, on works good. Or, it depends on uh which direction i'm shooting because uh the mm -hmm. city is in the south and yeah. the airport okay and i have a pretty good sight uh to north and west which works pretty well um yeah this is Rofuki. um i captured it a year ago nearly now and i reprocess uh, reprocessed it a little bit mm -hmm. is this uh, using a camera lens or yeah uh samyang 135 the 135 okay mm -hmm. nice 
at f2.8. Yeah, turned out really nice. And what yeah. were you using for uh, like a star adventure or tracker or was it on yeah, the mount? The star adventure mini. Star adventure mini, nice. And well, it out I really tried beautiful. to capture like 10 hours of it, uh, but um, the weather wouldn't be. And how long, were your, how long were your exposures? Uh, 90 seconds. 90 seconds, great. Yeah. That turned out really nice. It's a it's a fabulous region of space to image, isn't it? List so yeah, it's beautiful. My favorite, it's my favorite it is. region. Yeah, around. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a favorite. Do, but don't um, try this out of Munich. This is no, is that right? No, uh, I I also didn't uh, capture this from my home, so I went on the next mountain. Ah, okay. To get rid yeah, of a little bit of the light pollution. Yeah. It's like right. a portal uh, three to four mm. where I shot this. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. It is. Um, and I also tried Planetary this um, autumn, finally. That's a good and result. I bought, I bought a, a ZWO, what's it called? 462? Yeah, the 462. Yeah, QHY has a 462 as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good camera. And, and what scope is it? Uh, an 8 inch F5 Newtonian. Also the Newtonian. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Some fantastic detail. I, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah it's one of the moons incredible. there on the right. Yeah. I'm not sure which moon it is, to be honest. Yeah. No, but you caught one. I That's a really, so, so was this, was this a, uh, like a, a first result that you got or had you been trying planetary already for a little bit? And this was a, a result that came later on as you um, learned more. Good question. Mm, yeah. I reprocessed this okay. like a few weeks ago and yeah. That's why it turned out better than my yeah. first. It, it's a fantastic that, result uh, for Planetary. One yeah. of the one of the first nights yeah. I shot. Yeah. How many it frames worked, yeah. did you stack? Sorry. Sorry. Um, how many How many frames did you end up stacking? Could you? Huh. Um, That's a good question. I know the frame rate I got with the camera was like one hundred and twenty five frames per second, and I think I took three minute video videos, and stacked five or ten percent percent out of it cool. very nice great image yeah it, mm -hmm. it turned out pretty good for an eight inch f5 uh, mm -hmm. i was surprised too i used the yeah. um, 2x barlow of course and yeah i'm happy um yeah wow. that's a carina nebula is that a composite um, image or is that an actual that's that's a composite but the location okay. and uh, rotation and everything is correct Correct. Okay. Nice. Um, wow. I visited Cape Town in November mm -hmm. last year and shot this with a uh, 56 millimeter uh, focal length Sigma lens and my Sony Alpha 6300 Astro modified. Um, I'm not sure it's about 1.5 hours of exposure time. I didn't get more uh, because it was windy as hell mm -hmm. and I had to throw away like 10 hours or something. Mm. Don't you hate that? Uh, it's pain. <laughs> Always hard to throw away data. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it turned out I tried to stack four hours uh, of them and it turned out worse than this. Um, worse. Yeah. Sometimes less is more, right? If you're yeah, using the best absolutely. of the best. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's no sense incorporating. I just, yeah, yeah, I just used the best of the best and it turned out yep. better than like four hours. It's it's so really nice, nicely done. Example of that. Yeah, it's fantastic. And the composition um, I did with Photoshop. Okay. I have no clue <laughs> if you can do something like this in Pixinsight. Um, um, I don't know. I've never tried it. I'd probably probably be more difficult to do in Pixinsight. Yeah, but Photoshop is easy because mm -hmm. they have the sky replacement tool, which mm -hmm. um, oh. automatically <laughs> changes the sky. And yeah. Like I'm a lazy processor. I told uh -oh. you. Uh -oh. <laughs> I use the tools. I use the tools I have. <laughs> but it works pretty well. Sure. It did work well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. that's the cable station, isn't it? Just on this and the, on the on the top of yeah, the yeah. That's, that's the... correct. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Uh, it's shot from from uh, Camps Bay. Camps Bay. Yeah. And this one too. So this is at, I don't know, 12 millimeters somehow. Uh, it's not much. It's like 15 minutes or 20, 20 minutes of data. 
Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's very cool. Uh, it is a phenomenal experience. <laughs> the south, mm-hmm. the southern skies are incredible. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's very nice. Even even in Portal Seven. Yeah, this is shot from a Portal Six or Seven, yeah. like yeah. Peter said. Oh, it's crazy. Um, and this is the large Magellanic cloud. Peter's image obviously is a little bit better than mine, <laughs> but I spent. Oh no hour. no no no! Peter's I image sucked. That was no good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everyone was just being nice to him. <laughs> you should try combining, like uh, Robert's <laughs> RGB and your. Yeah, we should we should try and we should combine our data. Yeah, yeah that would be interesting. Maybe yeah. just H of RGB or even H of RGB. Actually, really interesting. Yeah, but I'm also stoked to see this result. So yeah, happy. Um, and I also wow. um, okay. tried that's, the sun. That's fabulous. Do yes, you uh, do your own uh, 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 proper no, telescope? It was, a, it was a customer scope. Ah, okay. Tested at work um, because he stated telescope defective doesn't work, and okay. he returned it. And I well, uh, yeah, it's I definitely like, defective. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and to the deep sky, it's wrong. Something went wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a fun day. Uh, it's actually uh, it was shot with the Lund LS80 MT wow. and uh, B1 uh, 1200C block filter. Wow. So it's a it's a thick six thousand euro scope, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible insane. to see the yeah, sun in this way. You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah, it's really great. And I processed it uh, again. Oh, mm-hmm. I just and you there used is... Photoshop to do this processing. Yeah, I used. So I processed it twice. I used Photoshop in the first place, and it didn't work at all. Okay. And the second try was with Pixinsight. And I only did color correction and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so this is a single shot, or I don't have a clue about sun photography. So uh, uh, it's, have... it's it's a it's a composite of the chromosphere, and uh-huh. um, um, I took longer exposures for prominences around. Ah, okay, okay. I combined the images in Photoshop, um, but I sharpened it and worked the details out and everything in Pixinsight, mm-hmm. which worked. Very well, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, no, it did. Yeah, fantastic. Really nice. Whoa, and there we go. Okay. That's my last try at Andromeda. Yeah. I don't know how many hours this is. I guess it's 10 or 12. I can't have to check. I'm always, uh, I can't remember stuff. <laughs> oh, but um, if you brought out the details, nine, very nice. It's 90 it's times. It's really good. It's 90 times 360 seconds. Who's better in math than me? This <laughs> is long. <laughs> this is long. This it's is it's, it's pretty nine long. hours. Okay. Awesome. I think. Yeah. Nine hours. If we can trust Yasha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I. So, what did you find challenging about taking this image? Um, because. The core, okay, because I know core, everyone shoots M31, and a lot of people tend to think it's going to be easy. But I actually find M31 a very challenging uh, deep sky object to yes. uh, yes. not only image but yes. process, process especially. And processing it is very difficult. A lot of people are uh, not happy with the results. Mm-hmm. They they collect two, three, four hours, and they're sort of scratching their head as to yeah. why it isn't as good as what they see, you know, in other images. So mm-hmm. it takes no, it, a lot of wasn't. data. It wasn't easy to process it. Um, mm-hmm. It's also difficult. It's like on M42, um, where you have to get the balance between um, the background mm-hmm. and the fine detail and yep. the core, right? Yep. And that's hard. The to core. Do. You got I, some nice detail on the core. Can you zoom in a little bit there? Yeah, I I tried to zoom in. I can't promise. Oh, you can't anything. zoom in. Oh, okay no it's sort of working yeah yeah yeah, yeah, it's sort of yeah you got some nice detail going on there yeah definitely yeah you definitely did nice work with the core um the only the only thing yeah. that i might try um and i'm not sure how well it would work uh but maybe some of the scnr uh to remove some of the green cast that's on the 
uh, inner core area, the dust lanes. A little yeah. on my screen, it looks a little greenish. I don't know if that's what you're mm -hmm. seeing. Yeah, I'm experiencing it. I'm experiencing it too on this screen. I can't see the green on my phone actually. Okay, that's a interesting. Bit weird and that's yeah, why I left it like it. Okay, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I just thought um, if you were experiencing a a green cast issue in there, that the SCNR targeted might. Yeah, uh, it, it could be that I just over processed it or you shifted the core. Possible. Too yeah. Too much. Yeah. yeah. I've done that on mine. I've I've over processed on the PC on the computer screen. Uh, it mm -hmm. looks fine on the computer screen, but if you look at it on the phone, it looks absolutely horrible. And it's like yeah. I, a kindergarten kid did yeah, uh, the processing or something. <laughs> That's uh, always, that's always the problem nowadays that you uh, normally with a PC monitor you have some sort of standard, but uh, they yeah. are most of but the time the also uncalibrated. But with the mobile phones, in addition to it, that's completely you don't have that. uh, it's yeah, it goes out the window then. Yeah, yeah. the phone looks completely different. Like the blues on my phone are completely way they were, they're way off. Way yes. Off. Yeah, I find and that too. It's yeah. Just, yeah, and it's also a difference between LCD and OLED. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the greatest issue. Yeah. Guys, I'm, um, I'm really sorry that we have to hurry up a bit because we want to stay somehow in the in the two hour range. Okay. okay. But uh, yeah, don't feel pressed. <laughs> Just yeah. continue. Yeah, don't feel any to. pressure, but we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my new scope. That's awesome. Wow. Hey, Look I'm at that, Abe. Eh? Fantastic. That's yeah. that that is just awesome. Farben, it's, it's uh, carbon carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. It's a yeah. scrap tube that uh, the the holes were drilled wrong, and I had to file them out and drill. Oh, really? Nice. New holes. Cool. So that is I built you, it you myself have... from scrap parts, basically. Cool. That's nice. That is. And it works great. Fantastic. Yeah. But what focuser is it? Sorry. The what is it? The focuser. The uh, Bada Steel Track. Okay. The Bada Diamond Steel Track. Nice. The short version and the and the autofocus motor is um from deepskydad.com ah, okay yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and this is my first image with it oh wow and it's isn't that 20, great 600 mc yeah. pro beautiful this colors awesome. just awesome yeah. yeah this worked out very well nice that's not I bad tried. for a scope from what you say scrap parts yes <laughs> it's completely scrap parts really you want to send some scrap parts to me <laughs> <laughs> if i can find a few more <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like this defect uh, solar telescope this lund yes yeah, <laughs> yeah that that was so defective <laughs> <laughs> i tried to zoom in a bit it's i don't know why it's a pain in the butt it's, i think it's because of uh, the screen capture or something mm -hmm. it doesn't want to yeah that's okay it, it's a it's a fantastic yeah. image yeah really well done really well done and what's really what also worked out pretty well is um collimation on scope and the corners are pretty much okay yeah as it can get with on um apsc mm -hmm. i really like um, the star I calculated uh, distance between mirrors and stuff for my um, 533 with a small sensor, and it also works very well on the uh, 2600. And also really nice framing with the with the cluster and the nebula. Yes, That's cool. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, it is very nice framing. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. How long have you been doing astrophotography? Uh, two years now. Two years. Wow, yeah, that's that's amazing results for two years. I did, I wasn't getting even that in two years, so that was that's fantastic, really nice. Yeah, and it's it's getting better. Now I have a new scope, mm -hmm. new possibilities. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And M forty five. Um, that's data from a colleague, from a friend. He gave mm -hmm. me because he is not really good at processing, and he said, "Oh no, this data is shit." And stuff and i saw a, a single <laughs> a single frame and i thought bro this is amazing and i processed it yeah and it turned out very well it's four, four hours four hours exposure time with a 071 mc pro wow he thought the In data was four. he thought the data was no good yeah that... he wanted to scrap the data and really? i said bro wow. this is 
That's Bruno. Same that's data. really that's good data. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is the sun again. Awesome. In what's it called calcium? Yeah, calcium. Three hundred and seventy-five-ish yeah. nanometers, I think. Um, also, a customer scope I tested. Customer stated defective. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> again. <defective. laughs> um, and a single frame of the Orion Nebula with the five thirty-three. Great, really nice. Nicely 100, done. 180 seconds. Um, process in Lightroom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lightroom you know what? Mobile. Sometimes it's fun. I've done that. Sometimes I've just sort of jumped from object to object, just mm. taking a two minute or five minute exposure and just for fun, just having a look around. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. This was when I tested my scope on the first evening and I just jumped around and tried different mm -hmm. uh, targets yeah. to compare yeah. it to my 80 millimeter EB. Yeah. And nice. it's a big difference. It's a huge difference. F7 to F4 is just insane. It's, it's great. Yeah, um, that's it. Okay, very nice. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Thanks for sharing. Oh, nice. yeah. May I proceed? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. you may not. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's still do it. Uh, so. I have a few images that I would like to share. Um, I was pretty busy with imaging these two months. Uh, I got a new camera, first time getting my hands on a Monaco camera. And so far, I like it. Um, so here are six shots that I completely finished this year so far. Wow. Well, the first one is the NGC. This is the Needle Galaxy here. Um, a second. Yeah, this is the Needle Galaxy here. Oh. Um, they're all shot at. Some of them are shot at 135, but this one is a 61 EDPH doublet apochromatic refractor, and I framed it like this because here's another galaxy hiding. It's the koi fish galaxy, and I'm planning on doing both uh, with Newton again because they're just super cool, and there's plenty of detail. Uh, then we have the next one is the question mark nebula. Mm, mm -hmm. This that's, was shot at very good. full yeah. moon. Uh, so shot at full moon. And I somehow managed to get RGB stars, even though I did use narrowband, broadband filters like RGB. Um, I had some walking noise, which I kind of got rid of with noise reduction, but still doesn't look very good. Uh, but this is a HOO combination, but the O3 is just, let me just quickly show you. Uh, this is, so this was the O3, but way less. Like I, mm -hmm. I could see just this, a, a little bit of this and a hint of data here. Um, but H alpha is just dominant as you can see here. Yeah. Um, I just was shot with a full moon just to test the Samyang and it works pretty well. And even the corners here. Oh, right. this is with the Samyang? So it's yeah, that yeah. large? Okay. Whoa. Uh, even the corners here are pretty good, I think. Mm. There's still some comb as you can see. Yeah. Uh, probably, yeah, that's tilt well, because that's it's tilt good here. And still tilt here too. I had to fix the tilt in my Samyang too. Yeah. While I was in Cape Town, <laughs> uh, but you know you gotta you gotta remember too. No, nobody really is looking at an image like this. You know they're not zooming no, in sure. and you know peeking around like we do. You know yeah. we're we're being extra critical. So the over you know the overall intent of the image is to view it like this, and that is yeah. fantastic. Really nice. Absolutely. Design. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But for example, if I wanted to do a mosaic, uh, which I basically bought the one thirty five for to make mosaics. Um, I cannot pro 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 uh, uh, properly align the the panels and right. maybe they just yeah there would be yeah, okay. miss, miss, they have to miss, overlap miss. more than yeah yeah uh, so the next one is again with the one thirty five this is a seagull nebula here nice, um, nice. yeah mm -hmm. I think this is just two, one hour of H alpha and one hour of O O three. Um, and then here we have the Thor Nebula. Mm. 
I really like the framing of this one. Yeah, isn't it nice? Yeah, yeah with the, yeah, the first time I saw it, I just uh, the, the the first time I saw it, I was just like, I'm gonna show this the same mm -hmm. night, um, and I did it. Um, so this is two hours of total exposure, um, oh. at f huh? one point eight, very low in the sky. Just, and hmm, just two hours, eh? Yeah, that's yeah. really great. And I, I'm happy that I got the other wings of the seagull here. Yeah, yeah. you can There's see that. Yeah. around the right. thaw, which is very yeah. dim. Yeah. Uh, so I like the semiang so far. Yeah, no, that's great. And what was it? Uh, what what type of mount did you have this set on? Was it the a EQ6R? The EQ6R. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Good. Oh, unguided, of course. This is unguided. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, then we have the rosette nebula. Mm -hmm. Um, this is H of RGB. Yep. Total exposure of those are beautiful colors in the stars that you got there. Yeah, this I was impressed the first time I did RGB. The star colors uh were, were just there mm -hmm. when I combined it. So mm -hmm. I love the monochrome. Um, and I'm pretty impressed by the detail. Of course, your mm -hmm. a bit better, a lot better to be honest. Um, he had a lot more detail here. Um, yeah, but he shot it with a uh, 3000 euro telescope, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit better camera. A little too. difference, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the Rosette Nebula. Mm, then we have the horse head. This is the HF I was talking about. This is just LRGB. Um, and I, I think I was a bit out of focus with luminance because the image looks really soft, even though I did just a tiny bit of noise reduction. So I'm guessing I was a bit out of focus. But yeah, here's the flare from Alilam, yeah. I think. Uh, this is Alita, and this is like the whole belt here. Um, so this is two hours of luminance and 90 minutes per channel in RGB. Uh, just nine minutes? Wow, that's impressive. 90, 90. Oh, 90, 90. I thought you said yeah. nine. I was like, wow, uh, <laughs> what kind of skies are you in? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's what not that And the last one, which I'm the most proud of so far out of all images, is the Spaghetti Nebula. This is 18 hours of total wow. integration. That's really, really well done. Yeah, it's that's yeah. a tough target, it's so faint. Yeah. yeah, and especially I was yeah. shooting it when it was very close to the full moon. So this was a oh. um, if... very bad thing I did. Yeah. Um, but I think I got a nice image. Nice result. You got a great result. Yeah. 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 yeah and Fantastic. the star colors here were just awesome. popping out as soon as I combined the photo in RGB. Mm -hmm. So I was really happy. And I'm still stuff. really happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. You should be proud of that. That's awesome. Great result. And in the future, I'm hoping to get some O3 data to just mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. onto it with the FRA 400, Oscar Apple, which has pretty similar focal length, just a bit more faster, and it's a triplet, so I mm. think it'll be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Oh, my good stuff. So far. Uh, how do I well, great, great image from you. Uh, just yeah. let me share my screen too. I show what I've got, but uh, honestly, no comparison to your photos that's really epic stuff here uh so i had this year one night i think oh and I, that's not much no really not it's just not working the first time i was still uh uh testing the hypergraph doing the video for the hypergraph so uh no time for for other photos um so this is more or less some raw things that I will show up now. Uh, I hope you can live with that. This is already a, already a TIFF, so a little, pro no, mm -hmm. not real processing. This is just com combined here in, in PixInsight. The Crab Nebula from mm -hmm. the beginning of the year, this was early, early January. Um, I got it. This is taken with a 12 inch RC, um, my 12 inch RC. Uh, mm -hmm reduced to two meter focal lengths with the ASI 2006, 400, sorry, not 600, 2400, and very short exposures, 80, 14 times four minutes. So uh, yeah, nearly an hour or so. 
um, but the, the problem is then it is just noisy. So yeah, uh, it's, it's not, gonna be. It's not yeah. a real. It's a great start though. Great start. Yeah. Yeah, I have just to put more more time into it. More time. Yeah. And th this was the problem. There was only one night predicted, and I. Well, I wasn't willing to spend one this only night on one target, so I just, um, yeah, surfed around the sky and and uh, took multiple photos of different objects. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, mm -hmm. this was also on my list that I huh? just want to check well, it out. Nice. That that is the full frame sensor, so uh, not really a good decision, <laughs> of course, because the target is so small. Mm -hmm. This is NGC. 1514 and this is only no this is 12 times for 12 times three minutes and this is even more noisy but also a good start so if i that's a fabulous start that's really yeah, good yeah, yeah. if you i add can, more to that it's gonna be fantastic put more to it i also checked some some comparison images on the internet so these outer shell will then pop out some yeah. more yeah, and also some little structures here. Really nice targets, though. It, it, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah that's a that's wonderful great. start. Can you can you just mm -hmm. leave it like this? Um, so I'm really happy that you choose the full like the full frame camera for this, because um, you know that this target <laughs> is um, located behind, or well, I don't know where it is, but it's in the way as we see it near the molecular cloud in Taurus. So basically, if you yeah. gain get a lot of data on it, you'll get some faint stuff going around. Like and the that, dust, dark dust. That is possible, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I've man. seen the Kevin Moorfield did it, but you know, okay. he's in, I don't know, Chile or something. Yeah. But I think you can do it too. I think there's already some that's showing there, actually. Yes. If you look on the on the left side of that image, you can sort of see Most that. Yeah, I can see stuff too, yeah. There's possibly yeah. something so, there. Something yeah. coming up here. Yeah. Starting to emerge, yeah. 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 So, there okay, yeah. good idea. I will put Ooh. some more time to it. <laughs> 40 hours. <laughs> 40 hours <laughs> <Yeah. it. laughs> come on snap snap where's the 40 hours let's go <laughs> then we have this one here normally with the rc i'm doing galaxies of course but um sometimes there are also these small um sharpless objects or small ngc nebulas are always a good uh all uh, good target for the rc so this is ngc 1893 i I'm really sorry, I can't remember where it is located. Um, but yeah, I I like I it notice. also. Sorry? Turned out really great. Yeah. Yeah. Turned out nice. It's a great start. That's in um that's yeah. the tadpole. Um yeah. that's uh Yeah. Isn't that in Origa? Or yep. It is. It yeah. should be Origa. It's very yeah. close to spaghetti yeah. nebula. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has a Two very bright target next yeah, to it. Right. The spider nebula and the other one is yeah. the flaming star. But also yeah, the flaming star. Yeah. This is just one hour exposure, so um, just mm -hmm. a, a snapshot. Yeah, a snapshot, a start. <laughs> yeah. And last, the last one is oh yeah, Hubble's mm. variable nebula. Yeah, Hubble's variable. That was nice. always on my list, but mm -hmm. I never. Yeah, I just. Because it is near the, the Christmas tree, I oh, think. Some yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, you just want to don't want to shoot this, but yeah, it has it has to be done sometime. And <laughs> I put how much is it? This is also one hour exposure. So this was this one night. Uh, I just surfed around the sky, took one one hour exposures of all these um, objects. You but, should yeah. you should shoot it again in like four to five years and just yeah. do an animation yeah. of it moves. That would be interesting. There yeah. should yeah. be a change then, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay, so that's for me. Maybe one last from the hypergraph, I think. I am not, not exactly sure if I showed this in the last session, maybe. Which I choose for the... Oh, I choose the GPEG. Mm -hmm. Okay. This was my last frame with the TS Hypergraph six inch that I had here for the for the video, uh, California Nebula. Also, only quick shots. I had to, oh, I wanted to bring out 
uh, different sorts of objects with that with that optic and not one deep integration so i took also a photo of m33 with the hypergraph uh, just to show show the differences and also choose different cameras uh, with it but i i just like it i like the, the size is fitting pretty good the framing is mm -hmm. not perfect uh, it said should be a more, more no true. it's a nice fit though it's great but yeah. it's yeah it's working all just rgb just combined not too much to it but mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> really well done yeah okay so nice that's it from me awesome yeah okay wow well, we um seen some very very exciting images this evening fantastic uh, i hope they can yeah, continue everyone's that. everyone's image was fantastic i really enjoyed seeing them thanks for sharing except for peter's but you know that, that's another story <laughs> <laughs> sorry peter <laughs> <You're> welcome <laughs> Okay, no, uh, it was a really nice evening. Thank you very much, Sean, for joining us. That was fantastic. Uh, it's fantastic. Thanks for having me. Really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, great show. Yeah, hopefully you can be on it again sometime in the future. Of course, you're always, uh, always welcome here. Maybe a little uh, pics inside. Uh, sure, uh, yeah, a little. Pics inside, how we call it. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Workflow. Little workflow, fix and site workflow, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Workflow yeah. live stream. Yeah. Maybe that's a, yeah, of course. Yeah, that, we can do that. Absolutely. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, definitely. We'll so we'll plan for something, okay? Coming up. Sounds good. Okay. So then, uh yeah, thank you other guys too. Uh have a nice evening so far and yeah, we'll see us next time in a approximately a month. And to okay. all the viewers, awesome. thank you for staying that long with us and I hope you liked it. If some questions popping up uh, later on, just feel free, drop a comment below the video. We will answer them, of course. Okay, sounds so, great. Okay, thanks for having me again. Great seeing you guys. Thank you, Sean. You all take care and clear skies. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Yes.